got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together. Together, we can move anything. Hello and a warm welcome to the Mission Foods Road Atlanta Speed Tour. It's the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series for 2024 and Road Atlanta, one of the most iconic circuits in America. Alongside me, Jonathan Green, Evan Slater again, a man who's uh, had some great results here in the past. Full field again, only round two, but we're starting to see a form guide. Yeah, obviously round two, so we saw how everybody did at Sebring. So we know who the known suspects are to be fast, but a few of them are missing. Connor Zilich and Austin Green, they're not here this weekend. So you're going to probably see a lead change for the championship because they're not getting any points. So really interesting to see that, but even though they're not here, it's still not easy grabs for all the guys that are here. This track is very difficult. 100 miles around here is brutal on the car, it's brutal on yourself. So it's not going to be an easy task for any of these guys up, up front. I would argue that this is a real specialist track. I, I remember Matt, Rafa Matos getting his first win here, and of course he's on the pole. Interestingly enough, though, no qualifying. The rain, heavy yesterday. They couldn't get out for qualifying. Will that make a difference? I don't think that'll make too much of a difference. So in the rule book, it says if there's no qualifying, they can't, they can't do qualifying for some reason. They go by the latest practice time. So everybody got a good practice session in. It was dry. So I think everybody got a good representative lap time. So I don't think there'll be any too crazy grid positions that aren't expected. Got any expectations, Connor Zillich? like you say not here but Connor Mosak should have won this race last year Zillage won it uh, he's in the field again Rafa Matos we've mentioned and of course uh, we've got the likes of Merrill who really want to win yeah I mean there's a lot of great drivers here Rafa Matos really good Thomas Nunziato Thomas Merrill so many great drivers Connor Mosak there's so many suspects that could win this race so I'm super excited to watch it thanks Evan well we'll head to the booth but we're going to take a short break here from Road Atlanta Ben Sissel will pick it up after this It brings all my fans, it brings the audience into the car with me. We turn 140 mile an hour entry speeds. The quickest and most efficient way for me to get information to my drivers is from using the VBOX HT2 system. Taking on the challenge, moving ahead. It's about going further, faster. At Customers Bank, we know that great things happen when you combine the best of technology with a deeply human touch. So we offer a wide range of personal, small business, and commercial banking solutions with outstanding personal service, giving you the edge you need to take on tomorrow. Welcome to the Mission Foods Road Atlanta Speed Tour here in the Fan Walk. We've got a lot of fans here. Beautiful weather, much better than the last few years. The Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. But right now, I am with two-time champion, two-time back-to-back winner here at Road Atlanta, Rafa Mato, starting off the season really strong, finishing with a third. New team, you got to be feeling good. I feel great. You know, it was a great day for us yesterday. We were hoping to qualify, but we'll take that result after first practice. We're quickest in, in the first test and first official practice. You know, hats off to the Nitro Motorsports boys, giving me a fantastic car. You know, hats off to uh, Concord American Flag Pole Company, you know, tr trusting us and believing on this project. And, you know, we're happy to deliver a, a good result in qualifying. Now we got to finish the job. Nice. I love it, Rafa. Good luck out there beautiful car here with nitro we're going to come back to another one of our veterans thomas merrill 
here at Road Atlanta. Thomas Merrill, always fast here. Thomas, if I can interrupt, sorry about that. But, you know, something we were reminded of a couple of minutes ago, we were here last year on this day, basically. You came into the black flag. I stuck a mic in your helmet, and I could tell by your eyes you were really concerned about your friend Scott Borchetta. And uh, does that kind of weigh heavy on your heart? You know, it, yes, at the time it did because you, you, you were watching that. It was like, oh, man, it didn't look good. But I was so happy when I saw him show up at Nashville. Uh, he's in good spirits, smiling. Um, and, yeah, it, the important thing is he's okay now. But at the time, yeah, it was really, really scary. And, and I had the, the worst seat in the house. I was sitting right and I could watch the whole extraction and I was trying not to look, to be honest. Well, yeah, so good. Scott Borchetta, so glad that you're back out and going. It was so good to see you in Nashville. I was just at your shop a couple of days ago, so so excited. Scott's doing really well. Sandy, thank you so much for all of your help. Let's come over here. Thomas Annunziata doing so well, qualifying P2, talking to the fans as he should be. Well, hold on, Thomas, don't leave him hanging. Come back here. There you go. Yeah, but uh, Road Atlanta, you've done pretty well here. You were kind of aggravated with your finish last year. What are you going to do this time? Well, I mean, I've, I'm more mature this year, right? Last year was my rookie season, so um, I've learned a lot over that time, and I'm trying to fight for a championship. So, got to finish all the laps, and in order to finish first or anywhere, you got to finish the race. So, I'm excited, I'm confident in these Nitro guys, and I'm happy to start off pole in this Q3 uh, Trans Am series. Nice, I love it. I love it. I saw Tyler Gonzalez over here. So we spoke to our two kind of veterans in the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 series, then Annunziata, who was new last year, and then Tyler Gonzalez, to, to most of the Trans Am field, kind of came out of nowhere. But you, you don't have that anymore. After your finish at Sebring, people are really watching out for you. And you have a lot of road racing experience. What's your experience here at Road Atlanta? Yeah, I mean, I've raced here a ton. I live only about seven hours away. Uh, I race TCR and IMSA and GT4 and SRO, so I got a lot of time here, that's for sure. Uh, still a little new to these Trans Am cars, but they're a lot of fun. I think I'm taking a, a good liking to it, that's for sure. But uh, I'm going to here to give a good result for Nitro Motorsports and hopefully put this 40 car up front. Nice. I love it. Well, that's Tyler Gonzalez. Looks like they're about to start clearing the grid, but I'm going to come over here and talk to Connor Mosack. Connor Mosack, you know how I love the awkward questions, and it seems like you're always really fast here at Road Atlanta and then just bad luck near the end. What's your strategy this time? Well, this year we really focused on our long run speed, so uh, I feel really good about what we had in yesterday morning's practice. I uh, feel like we could really back up our lap time, so guys here at Silver Hair did an awesome job uh, giving me that car, and we'll see you know, if it does last in the race, but, but I do feel really good about it, and um, yeah, well, hopefully we'll drive our, our way up into victory lane in and, and, uh, and honor of Scott Borchetta here last year, too. We got him on my helmet this year, so it'd be a cool deal. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Connor. Connor, really good friends with Scott Borchetta. Ben Mayer, man, nice job. You are doing so well. I told you that a couple of minutes ago. So proud to see the progress, and it seems like each race keep getting faster. What's your strategy here starting in, what are you, fifth, sixth, when the green flag drops? Uh, I definitely want to save tires for the end because you're going to need to be fast in the end, and you don't want to hold on let me think <laughs> we are live you need to you need to save tires for the end definitely just because you want to be able to pass people in the end that's what i did at sebring and it really helped me i was i was catching up to the guy in seventh a ton at the very end of the race but i just couldn't get to him so hopefully yeah. Well, I love it, Ben. You're getting a lot faster. Keep it up, man. Just be careful going through one when the green flag drops. We're going to come up here and start our proceedings here with my good friend, Marvin Gray, with the uh, Road Race Ministries. Bill Knox now works for us, but Marvin Gray, who's kind of our road pastor out here in the Trans Am Series, take the mic, take it away. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to play here in the beauty of your creation lord we thank you for this track we thank you for all the workers that are here bless the corner workers the track workers bless the crew bless our drivers bless the officials thank you for all they do that we can go racing and lord now we ask that you would bless and protect our troops and our safety forces as they protect us and we pray for an end to the conflicts around the world in jesus name amen Amen. Marvin Gray, thank you so much. And now we have a special treat, Amanda Martinez, to deliver us the national anthem. Amanda, take it away. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Goodness, Amanda Martinez, so beautiful. Thank you so much. Jonathan, back up to you in the booth. Thank you, Ben. Fantastic rendition, as always. And alongside me, as you saw earlier, is Evan Slater. And uh, in the past, Evan has had some great results here. I think your best is, what, fourth? Yeah, I got fourth here in 2021. Yeah. So, and it's a tricky circuit, isn't it? We've got 16 minutes till the get-go. Um, what would you be thinking now? No qualifying? You know, it's, it's not an easy build-up, has it? But when you've had a, a disrupted build-up. Yeah, I mean, these drivers are so used to it. They've done so many race starts. It's probably not too much nerves for them, but there's always a little bit of just, like, baseline nerves before you go out in a race car. I mean, it's always it's a, it's a crazy experience. So um, I would say for them, they're just probably focused on thinking about what they want to do on the race start. Obviously, I always say, like, all plans are good until the green flag goes because you have your <laughs> plan, okay, I want to go to the inside in turn one. I want to outbreak the guy in front of me. You always have all these plans, but they never actually end up <laughs> working out quite to plan. Um, so, yeah, they're just trying to think of scenarios and what they would like to do in these certain scenarios so they can get the race to go in their favor the best they can. Well, we saw on the grid, or the pre-grid, good, good crowd here. And if you saw Chris Dyson and was wondering what he was doing out there, yes, he's still in TA. Uh, and, yes, he had his overalls on because he'd just been out in practice and he'd be qualifying later. But, of course, he's got some skin in the game now because Rafa Matos's sponsor, the flagpole, the American flagpole, is also part of the Dyson group. So he has got... Uh, an eye on Rafa today, who starts in pole position. We're about to get underway, and the engines will be fired out momentarily. And we welcome our viewers on MAV TV across the United States. We welcome you to the famous Road Atlanta. You're looking down on the brand new pit and tower, uh, or tower that is called uh, Road Atlanta's pit tower and uh, yeah it's a fantastic place a brand new facility we're on the second floor of that tower looking down uh, on the exit of the last corner which you were telling me uh, literally as you come under that bridge from here to what turn six it's literally like one line yeah so it's really hard it's it's a fast flowing sector so there's really no great passing opportunities you can make a move into turn one but it really has to be high commitment and uh, it's, it's slightly risky, but it's super fun, that sector. I mean, coming down this last turn, we're sitting, like, right on the outside of it. You're going, like, 130 miles an hour down that hill through that turn. It's a crazy experience. So this track is just so much fun to drive around. You can see that hill on the left side of your screen there. Um, but this track is just so much fun. So these drivers are going to have a blast, but it's not going to be a, it's not gonna be an easy 100 miles. Because this track is so technical, there's no room for mistakes. They have to be fully focused all the time. And any mistake can be very consequential because there's not much runoff. So how do you set the car up? Because there's that one long straight from seven to ten. Uh, so how? And then you've got this, you know, the first part of the course, which is literally one long snake all the way to six. So how do you set up? So it's very difficult here. So there it is. Yeah, there's there's that snake. So that's a very technical sector. You can see. Um, we'll go through the grid and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, just let me get the grid in. Rafa Matos, Anunciata, it should be good against uh, master and pupil, so to speak. Uh, Anunciata with a win at Cota last year. Merrill and Gonzalez, Merrill a specialist here. 
Uh, Connor Mosak and Ben Mayer. Looking forward to seeing what Ben Mayer can do. Boris Set Jr. in the Hendricks colours this weekend. Josh Hurley alongside him, the eSport champion from 2020, Jake Drew, coming in. A new boy. We'll talk about him. Barry Bowes now with SLR M1 race cars. And Barry Bowes is on a absolute tear at the moment. Lostowski and Bichelle, the young Gavin Bichelle, coming in again with SLR. Adam Andretti starts on the seventh row. Caleb Bacon looking to do what he did this time last year and come good. Thomas Ellis, relatively new. Will Rogers, likewise. They start on row eight. Then it's Durban and Prochuk. Uh, Prochuk starting his 100th Trans Am race. Sabato and Odrick, the former Miami Dolphins. Tight end, I think he was. Dave Hodge and Michelle Abate on row 11. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about Michelle. She's got some special color scheme this weekend. Mock and Sheehan. Uh, Darren Mock had a broken axle, rear axle, in the first practice, so it's been a tough weekend. Caitlin and Phillips, Young, Raymond, Winston, and John Weisberg from the New York area in the Iron Smoke Red Line Oil car. And then right at the back for Ryan Companies, it's Matt Gray. And this, of course, a very important race weekend, given that Connor Zilich, who sure enough isn't doing the full series but uh, there's a chance now certainly for Gonzalez uh, certainly for this man Thomas Merrill a former champion to make hay as they say when the championship leader is away after that first round Connor Zilic leads the championship with 110 points just nine ahead of Tyler Gonzalez the new man uh, in Nitro Motorsports Rafa Matos his teammate uh, is right there uh, with 97 points in third place and then it's Annunciata Green Merrill at the moment in sixth place and with Green Green not here as well. Uh, Merrill will be thinking of points and prizes. But hats off to Tyler Casera, who's helping uh, Nitro Motorsports this weekend. And he was smiling, wasn't he, to both of us saying, yeah, my boys are at the front. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Tyler, and that's hard work, what he's doing. So I do some driver coaching myself. And he's working, I normally focus on like one or two cars. He's working with seven race cars this weekend. So, I mean, he's the time management to do that, that's really impressive. So, And he's doing well. I mean, his guys are running right up towards that front of the field. So really impressed with that whole Nitro Motorsports team, all the great people working there and all the Great drivers making it making it happen on the track. We'll be on board with the ASIO Data car of Barry Bowes. You just saw a glimpse of it there. And like I said, Barry Bowes, man on a tear at the moment, really going well. Um, he changed teams and made an announcement effectively in one of his press releases saying that, you know, he's been around and this championship a while now and he just feels like he's ready for the next level and joining Scott Legacy and that team is just a step forward of professionalism for him and it's paying off it's only round two but already Barry Bowes is moving up the grid and we're used to seeing him in midfield but now we're seeing him you know basically uh, just outside the top 10 if not vying for a top six finish here high above as you can see the Road Atlanta circuit. You wouldn't believe it. If you were here 24 hours ago, uh, you would have seen a very different sight. It always seems to rain at some point in Road Atlanta. Guess it's lunchtime for this team <laughs> as they get ready. But, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, a lot of rain. Does it make a difference to, I mean, we all talk about, you know, green tracks and rubber down and all this sort of stuff. Uh, and that's all good science and it's all good race talk. But does it make that much difference in Trans Am, a rain overnight? So it totally does. So, yeah, you hear about these terms, a green track, a rubbered in track. All it's talking about is what the rubber level on the track is looking like. So obviously the tracks are made of asphalt. Um, but if you have the tire rubbers, when the cars are driving around, rubber gets deposited and it builds up grip on all of these tracks. So you can have better speed. You get a better quartering and better everything like that. So um, when the track rains really hard, it kind of washes all that rubber off. So the track gets what you call green. So then there's just the asphalt. There's no rubber built up onto that. So it's actually relatively low grip. So in these cars, it's not like a crazy huge difference, but it is definitely noticeable. You'll notice that you maybe you have to roll two miles an hour less through all the corners. There's slight things that you're going to have to do a little bit like earlier. You might have to brake a little bit earlier. You might have a harder time getting the power down just because that good rubber that sticks to your tires is off of the racetrack. So thanks, Evan. We'll speak more in a moment. But let's head down to Ben Sissel in the pre-grid. Well, we're here at the Mission Foods Road Atlanta Speed Tour. I'm here with my friend Juan Gonzalez of Mission Foods. I know him as a race car driver with International GT and SVRA, but Juan, Mission Foods is all over motorsports globally. Is that just because of your love for motorsports? Uh, yeah, my, my, my love for, for motorsports starts since when I was a teenager. But then I get to work, and now I have time to race and 
be part of motorsports to, to my favorite sport. And we like to be part of Trans Am sponsors and SBRA, especially in Formula 4. And we're also involved in IGT. You know, I, I've been racing SBRA since uh, 91. Okay, and I always love to come back to this racetrack. I love it. Well, Juan Gonzalez, take the mic from me. And it, I, I love having you here. Deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engine. There you go, man. Hey, you're awesome. Thank you. And with that, the roar of these beautiful muscle cars, a championship that's been going since 1966. And of course, this circuit opened in the mid 50s, so it's been going a fair few years since the early 70s. And we've got 30 iterations of Trans Am here. So we are well established here, and there's some great names. In fact, there's some great names racing here this weekend, including Wally Dollenbach uh, and many others. We've got crew chiefs from NASCAR up and down the field. I was finding out about uh, Ben Mayer's crew chief, who's an ex-NASCAR guy. So there's a lot of real heavy-duty, heavy-weight folk uh, who have decided to be part of this new era of Trans Am. Uh, Evan Slater, if you don't know him, he is one of America's up-and-coming drivers. He's not in the seat at the moment, so if you've got an idea that you want to see a youngster succeed, he's right here alongside me, and he's available. And he is Evan Slater Racing. Look him up. He's got a great record here, and he's just chomping at the bit to go and take on these boys, and he's absolutely more than capable. We'll be on board also with Adrian Lostowski, the fast and we'll also be on board with the ultimate headers Adam Andretti we've got two views of his car he had an off in fact in the first practice just got a bit of grass cuttings and uh, he came in early and I thought there was something wrong with the car and then I looked at the front and it was just covered in grass uh, and then I also realized that he had a TA practice straight after yeah. so I think he thought better of it he's like oh, I'm not going very well yeah. so I'll, I'll come back in but uh, take me through the procedure now Evan we're going on this formation lap and I always think when you're watching from the outside it looks like the oddest time in a motor race where you just weaving from side to side and that's obvious you're getting mechanical grip in the tires but there's more to it than that there's brakes there's temperatures there's all sorts of system checks and probably engineer checks that you're doing with your radio etc tell us about it yeah so basically there's a, there's a lot of things to do i mean i'm going to try and remember all of them but <laughs> um so the first thing radio check you do you kind of talk on the radio at different points in the lab to make sure you can talk with your engineer so it's just when they're racing you know where you can hear it so going through these laps will be like okay i'm in turn six okay i'm in turn ten okay they just talk like do you that. like to talk a lot or like to like hear your engineer at all? I, I don't like much. I like basically radio silence when I'm focusing. I'll hear, like, I like to hear the gaps. I like to hear if I have a spotter, like, okay, there's a car inside. I like to hear stuff like that. But normally it's pretty radio silent, except for this first lap where I'm talking to make sure the re radio can hear. Well, let's take a look at this Road Atlanta circuit, because it's technical. We're here at Road Atlanta for round two of the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. This track's fast, it's technical, and it's high speed. Turn one, you can see the race start here from 2023. Nathan Hearn making a great move on me. It's kind of unfortunate, but this turn's really fun. You got to use the compression, you got to use the hill to really maximize the racetrack there. Here you got the S's. It's really single file, it's kind of follow the leader. You can see Connor Zillich getting held up by some lap traffic here. It's just really difficult to make a move because there's really not much space to really do anything, but you can still gain a lot of time through there. Turn six, one of the hardest braking zones on this track. You can see Merrill going down the inside of Connor Zillich. That turn is really fun because you get it uphill on the braking zone. So you can really go late on the brakes and push it and roll that speed on the way in. Down the back straightaway, you're getting up to like 165 miles an hour here, and then it's hard on the brakes into turn 10A. You can see Zillich going down the inside of uh, Brent Cruz right there. It's really a great place to make a move because it's such a hard braking zone. Then you got turn 11 and 12. Those are really fast, high commitment, high speed corners, and they round out the lap around Road Atlanta. Thanks, Evan. A great look at this circuit with Evan Slater. We're on board with Keith Prochuk as he celebrates his 100th Trans Am race, and believe it or not, all of them with Cope Racing. And it's been a great story, and certainly Mike Cope considers him part of the family after 100 races, and long may it continue. But uh, great to see Nathan Hearn, even though he was overtaking you there. Uh, but I'm sure he's tuning in in Australia. Nathan, if you're watching, we want you back in the States. I watched him cruise to six race wins in a row in New Zealand very recently as Australia took on New Zealand in their own TA2 challenge. So it's alive and kicking is muscle car racing around the world. And we want to see more Australians, more New Zealanders, more uh, 
Asians coming out over here and racing in the championship as Nathan did last year. He is hoping to make some moves here and do some racing here later. So yeah, we got two pace laps this this race, which is great because like we was talking about before the uh, the track guide, it really gives you time to get the car all dialed in. So you see the drivers weaving, that's to heat up the tires. They're also going to do some accelerating and some braking to really get those brakes up to temp. They're also going to be obviously using the motor, which gets the motor warm and all the oil temps and coolant temps up. So it's just this first lap is used to get every every single system in the car warm, and then you also use it to check and make sure everything's working. You hit the brakes really hard, make sure the brakes are working. You don't want to have a, a brake failure. Well, going well dumb into the question. First turn. How do you know that the brakes are up to temperature? Is it just that they feel right? So yeah, we have we've driven these cars so much. Most of these drivers are very experienced, so you can kind of just go into the like go in driving at a random speed and slam on the brakes, and you can just feel okay. How fast is the car slowing down? Is it supposed to slow down this fast? Is it supposed to slow down better? If it's supposed to slow down better, and it normally does slow down better, that means the brakes aren't up to temp, the tires aren't up to temp, something's not ready. So just keep going and keep warming it up. Hitting the brakes super hard actually is one of the best things you can do because it heats everything up. It, you, the, uh, the calipers grab onto the rotors, so that generates a ton of heat in the brakes. And then also the tires are sliding, yeah. or they're trying they're to slide them, yeah. on the asphalt, so the tires are also getting hot. So you can see you can see a lot of guys like doing slight acceleration, slight braking, and then the weaving to get the tires ready to go through a turn. And this is a great view from turn seven, all the way down under that motel bridge, all the way downhill, mind you. Uh, there's a few bumps downhill, but it mainly goes down very quickly and steeply after this bit and down into 10A, which is probably the most normal place to overtake, or at least prepare to overtake. Yeah, for sure. I mean. It's the easiest way to overtake it on the braking. If you if you know that, okay, I can stop my car faster than the guy in front of me, you both have to get to the same speed for the corner. But if you can stop faster, that means you can start braking later. So that allows you to make a move and gain a bunch of distance because you're going 165 miles an hour and he's already slowing down. So you can just blow right by him. Um, so that's the easiest place to overtake. And you're slowing down 110 miles an hour or whatever. You're slowing down a lot right here. Um, so it's just great if you're if you're five percent better on the brakes. That's extra distance that you can go and go deeper. Well, as you can see, we're two by two uh, as we come out of 10B now and getting ready for the start of round two of the championship with Zilic away. And by the way, on pole position in the truck series at Coda this weekend. Good luck, our friend Connor Zilic. But now it's Trans Am from Road Atlanta as we head to green. Rafa Matos with a great start. Brilliant start. Thomas Merrill going colors. down the inside, Thomas and Nunziata. That was a great start for that inside row. They got a much better run than the outside. Yeah, I got a feeling about Merrill today. He's had some bad luck at uh, Road Atlanta in the past, but he's also been always there or thereabouts. He's so fast in that number 26 HP tuners. There you see it in third place. And Nunziata settling down into second and on board now with Keith Procheck as we go down through five and six. Oh, it's rattle and hum, isn't it? Yeah, you can see it's very tight through there. There's not much room to go too wide, but these drivers are pushing hard. They're trying to get the most positions they can. The start is the best time in the whole race to gain position, so they're trying to maximize from that. I said to you pre-grid, if Rafa gets the start, which he has got, um, he's hard to beat round here. He won his first ever Trans Am race here in 2018 and, of course, went on and he's been a two-time champion since. He also won this race in 2019 and he said to me, uh, as I I spoke to him on the pre-grid, no question. This is one of his favorite circuits. Uh, and he also didn't worry too much, as you mentioned, that the qualifying didn't happen because he was pretty much dialed in. He knew what his car was, and he knew he where was he fast. was. It's the same for everybody. He's fast. Looks like Thomas Merrill was trying to look into the inside of 10A there. We're not, not really on the screen, but I saw him kind of peek in there. Keeping an eye on Connor Mosak, of course. He led this race, was pole position here last year, uh, got overtaken, and then in the pursuit of trying to get back the lead, he went off. Uh, and didn't finish the race. The race went to Zilic instead. So we're keeping a, a, a watchful eye on Conor Mosak, who incidentally is going to do the full season, and that's great for Trans Am, but he's also going to be doing Arca and uh, Xfinity as well as some truck racing. As through goes Caleb Bacon in the number 18. Got a chance to meet his granddad, the, fam the famed Al Bacon. And, of course, Chad Bacon, three generations of bacon. That's a lot of bacon if you're hungry. It's a lot of bacon. That's a lot of racing. So great <laughs> move by him into turn one. So like I was talking about earlier, you can make a move there, but it has to be really high commitment. Yeah, CB Motorsports took me through their entire garage at the weekend and uh, really sophisticated. Of course, they've got lots of IMSA background and sports car racing in their history. They've won uh, at Sebring and many other great races over the years. So CB Motorsports know exactly what they are doing.
So then, we are keeping an eye on how he goes. Ben Mayer in seventh at the moment. Josh Hurley coming back into real racing, so to speak. He's a driver coach and has done a lot of racing in the real world, but he won our uh, E Championship back in 2020 during the pandemic, and it's great to see him back in the seat again. He's just behind Conor Mosak, but we're now starting to see some overtakes as they dive into 10A. Under pressure now is... Thomas Merrill from Annunciata, but Merrill got past Annunciata earlier in the race, and now Annunciata trying to make a move, uh, and that's the obvious place to do it. That was a very interesting, interesting battle, actually. So Thomas Merrill got by Annunciata, then Annunciata got back by him. So going into 10A, Annunciata was in front. He pulls out to the middle of the racetrack to defend, and Thomas Merrill goes around the outside, which is really a, not a, a normally done move, but he was able to make it stick. He was able to be really confident on the brace, get that car presented, and he was able to make it work around the outside of 10A. So, and also don't forget Connor Mosak right there in fifth, waiting for these two if they trip over each other. So, great racing so far at the start of this race. I love the drone, really gives you an idea of how Mosak is just pulling away slightly from those, sorry, from how uh, Matos is just slightly pulling away at the front from Merrill and Inciata Gonzalez. Great run at Sebring. Gonzalez, the new kid on the block, and being mentored, if many ways, by. Uh, oh. uh, Rafa that's Matos, but Rafa was beaten by him. And Tommy Sheehan, sadly, oh, that's in so the pits in the Vixen Motorcycles car. And that looks pretty terminal to yeah, me. Yeah, I was talking to Tommy, and he had this is a brand new How car that he just got for this year. And he was super excited about it. So it's super unfortunate to see that splitter damage. So that's there's a lot of ways that could have happened. So maybe he went off the track, that splitter dug into the dirt, and it just kind of ripped off from the momentum of the car moving. Maybe he had contact with somebody. Super unfortunate, no matter what happened. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I've been watching Australia in Formula 1, and it's it's very much a street track. But then I look back here at this track, and it's really as they go side by side. There's really not a lot of runoff here either, and it's that far from a street circuit. Uh, but there's really nowhere to go off. Look at how close the walls are. Yeah, at the front are. of our screen, you can see that. Ben Mayer made it stick on the inside of that, that downhill. That's a really high commitment move because you're going so fast through there and there's really no run up there's no room for error so that's great racing for the both of them yeah and likewise just behind them jake drew coming in for connor zillage in the famous number seven and as we mentioned zillage racing in truck racing he got the pole position at coda this morning and jake drew uh, uh, in his 20s from uh, literally down the road from uh, connor zillage they're good friends he's got some good arca and xfinity uh Excuse me, some good Arca and West Coast uh, experience oh, as well. Oh, Connor Mosak! Big time! That's Connor Mosak. Looks oh, like maybe a no. car fire. Something's smoking real bad. That could either be, to me, that looked like either That's a, a car fire. Of, it's a car fire. Wow. So, Connor Mosak creates the drama, and surely that's going to bring out a safety car, and sure enough, the ca caution is out. So, three laps gone, and one of our favorites is already out of contention. Well, you come back live on MAV TV just at the right time. We're under caution while you're away. Uh, we had a big problem for Connor Mosak. He kind of, well, we don't know yet. It looked like he kind of went up in flames. It's either a heavy puncture that's now caused a fire or he's hit something. And uh, as you can see, the fire and smoke pouring out. He's okay, thankfully. But the silver hair is not as fast as it was just a few moments ago. So that's so weird. It's like the body around the exhaust. It looks like the body's burning. I have no idea. I wonder if there's maybe more flames internally, but that is not what you want to see for a race car. But luckily, Connor, Connor Mosak is out of that car. Really a little quickly. bit of time more for Connor Sh uh, for uh, uh, Tommy Sheehan then to get fixed up. Yeah, so they're doing something with the brakes. It looks like they're bleeding the brakes. So I wonder, uh, that's weird. I don't know. Maybe he had some air in his brakes and it messed up. He hit the brakes and the kind of the pedal went long and he maybe hit the back of somebody. I don't know. Here's a question for you. Is it frustrating? to be in the caution or is it time sometimes to get a breath and rethink it i really don't like it when you're under caution because it gets so hot right so these cars they don't have ac at all they basically they're very raw race cars so they there's no you can catch insulation. up on your podcasts <laughs> like, yeah. basically you can you can spend a little bit of time to relax but you're relaxing and you're just heat soaking so everything's getting hot you're you're your heart rate has been so high from driving so much, but now it's kind of getting a time to cool down and chill out. Your heart can start slowing down a little bit, but it's, it's a weird feeling because you're so used to going so aggressive, so hard, pushing 100%, and now you're all going 60 miles an hour, stuck behind one another. So it's such a, a weird experience, and it's just, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'd rather just keep racing. But sometimes at the end of a race, if you're like starting to get really thirsty, you can take the full course caution, slow down a little bit, grab a drink of water in the car, and uh, that can sometimes be helpful. But this early in the race, it's just slightly frustrating. But Obviously, it's great to have the caution because we can make sure Connor Mosak is safe. Well, as you can see, Connor Mosak's car just uh, caught up outside of seven. 
And uh, so that's why we're under caution, Kodomosa coming out of seven and then pulling over with that flame and fire. So we're under caution here at Road Atlanta. We're gonna take a short break. We're gonna be right back with you though. Don't go anywhere. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. The Mission Foods Laguna Seca Speed Tour returns to WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca May 3rd through the 5th. Featuring the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli Western Championship, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, PSSA, International GT, Historic Trans Am, Toyo Tires 25 Challenge, Optima Ultimate Streetcar, and Saturday you can take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show. You do not want to miss the Mission Foods Laguna Seca Speed Tour May 3rd through the 5th. For tickets, simply go to WeatherTechRaceway.com. As you can see, we're still under caution, and we've had a dramatic situation for Conor Mosak. Uh, he went off, and the car in flames. It's now distinguished, uh, and they are going to extinguish, I should say. It's both distinguished and extinguished. But anyway, either way, he's out of the race. But uh, we will get a restart, and I've got uh, Evan Slater alongside me. We're going to go through that restart in a moment. But it's Matos, Merrill, Annunziata, Gonzalez, Mayer, and Hurley. That's your top six. And we welcome our viewers back on MAV TV because we are still under caution after Conor Mosak had gone off. A uh, few other stories to tell you. Uh, Boris said Junior is a good one. Um, he's racing with the Hendrix Colors this weekend, both as an overall and as a color scheme on the car. He's currently in seventh position, and that's a really, really special moment for him. His father carried the similar colors, and in fact, his father, again, will run his last Xfinity race in June in Sonoma in those famous Hendrix colors. And if you know Hendrix and Kyle Larson and that team, they are absolutely the top team in NASCAR at the moment. So as a young 18-year-old, it wouldn't be bad to wear that blue and white, would it? No, not at all. Probably an honor for, for Boris Jr. Yeah, he said, I said, does that mean you're part of the Hendrix? I mean, are you going to be, and he goes, no, 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 it's just, just, just the overalls. I said, yeah, it's a start, though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let me talk about restart here. Uh, let me put you in a position. Let me put you in Tyler Gonzalez's position. Okay. Four. How do you play it from four? It's an opportunity, but can it also be a disadvantage. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I, you're putting me in Tyler Gonzalez's view, but I don't really know how that car is driving. So the way your car is driving depends a lot on how you're going to do in this restart. If you're really comfortable with your race car, you're like, okay, the car's handling great. I got good performance. I can go faster than these guys in front of me. Then you're going to be in a really aggressive mindset. You're going to be like, okay, any gap that I see, I'm going for it, and it's in front of me. You're not looking in your mirrors at all because you're just focused forward. I mean, you obviously make sure you're not turning in on anybody, but you're really focused forward. But if also Tyler Gonzalez is like, oh, man, this race car is really hard to drive. I'm really sliding around a lot. I'm struggling to have the pace of these guys in front of me. Then he's going to be focused more on his mirrors. Okay, how do I position my car so nobody can pass right. me? Yep. So it's like if you're happy with your car, you're like, okay, how can I pass? If you're not happy, you're like, how do I not get passed? Well, putting that kind of inference on it, look at uh, Merrill. He'll be thinking exactly the same because he knows all too well. There's those Hendrix colors I was talking about. Uh, but he knows all too well that if he gives Batos too many opportunities over this 100 miles, he's got no chance of winning. Merrill will see this surely as his chance these next two laps to have a go at the great mighty Matos. Yeah, there's two thoughts behind it. So sometimes you obviously you want to lead the race because leading the race is good for the sponsors, it's good for the points, you get extra points for leading the race. But sometimes it's much better to be in second. If you're just sitting in second behind the guy, you can see where you're faster than him, you can see where he's slow, you can see you have, I don't know, you have 35 laps to think about, okay, how am I going to make a move on this last lap? So if you're sitting in second and you're comfortable with how fast he's going and if you're comfortable with how well your car is driving, then you can just be like, okay, I'm not going to pass him. I'm just going to stay behind. We're both going to check out. So then at the end of the race, it's just me and him fighting. Uh -huh. And you can learn 
spending that time following him, you can learn where you can make that move and make that opportunity. Well, let me ask you this. We talk a lot about time management over the 100 miles. Rafa Matos is a genius at it. Merrill's not too bad either. Is it easier to preserve tires leading or is it easier to preserve tires chasing? It's hard. It's like it's kind of a balance. So in a real downforce car, I think it's easier when you're leading because in a downforce car you have you can get dirty air. So then it like um, you have to use your tires more. You have to use more mechanical grip. In these cars, they don't have that much downforce. So if you're behind the guy, you can get the draft, which can definitely help you save your tires. But you also have to use your tires harder because you're not getting that downforce from the front end. All right, let's head down to the pits because the Coke car of Tommy Sheahan is trying to be repaired. Ben is on the scene. Well, thank you, Jonathan, and I'm here with Jamie Obi here with Tom Sheehan's crew. Tom's in this beautiful new livery car, and looks like he's about to pull out that. Look at this, the Vixen, Vixen Cycle, the Vixen Cycle Company. I believe it's his wife's company. So, so sad for Tom Sheehan. Jamie, what was what did Tom say happened out there? Well, I guess somebody got into him and pushed him up against the fence out there and ripped the brake line off it. Pretty much ended our day. Great car. Just an unfortunate thing. Yeah. Beautiful, great car. Unfortunate for Tom Sheehan, but Mike Cope, you guys have other uh, dogs in the fight, don't you? Yes, we do. Yeah, we'll be back, too. We'll be back with that car. It didn't hurt anything seriously, so we'll get her fixed. Nice. And, Jonathan, I'm hearing from race control that lights are out in the pace car. We're coming back to a restart, so back to you. Thanks, Ben. That's what we like to hear. There is the Janetta. Those are the lights that aren't on. And so we are going racing very soon. As he said, Mike Cope has got some big skin in the game, including second place, Thomas Merrill. We misspoke earlier, calling it a house chassis. Of course, Tommy Sheehan is in a Cope car, as is Prochuk in his 100th race for Cope cars and looking forward to seeing what Mike Cope and the boys can do. Merrill in second place. We're about to go racing. Down the hill we come. Up go the revs and away we go to green. And Merrill is all over Rafa Matos, as you can see. Matos defends, goes to the inside. Merrill now goes to the outside. Can he make it side by side into turn one? It's dicey stuff, but Merrill makes it. Wow. What an overtake. 26 to the lead, and Matos has to sit and in watch in awe as Merrill does the business around the outside. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was talking about how Merrill might want to hang back. He did not <laughs> want to hang back. He wanted to go. So, I mean, great move around the outside. What he did there is he pushed Rafa Matos all the way to the inside of the track where it's dirty. There's no rubber. There's a bunch of, like, random dirt and dust and stuff. No grip. So then Merrill comes shooting out to the outside of the racetrack where the driving line is. That's where all the grip is. That's where the rubber is. So then he can use that grip and roll more speed and just roll right around the outside of Rafa Matos. Into six. And Anciata looking for his position as well to get past. Likewise, Gonzalez there. Mayer in fifth now. Hurley up to six. Uh, Boris said Jr. still seventh. Then it's Drew, Bacon, and Bose rounding out the top ten. Out of seven, they come and down the hill once again. And already uh, Merrill is... Making a way, he's got what three car lengths and Evan Slater. Let's have another look at that overtake from your point of view. Yes, you can see Thomas Merrill gets a great exit and he goes, he fakes to the inside. So he gets Rafa Matos to go all the way to the inside, then he shoots to the outside where all that grip is and just breezes by him on the outside. Leaves him plenty of room on the apex if he wanted to hang in there, but he couldn't hang in there because of all the dirty, all the dirty track on the inside. So it's a great move. That's just going right around the outside. Textbook move um, by Thomas Merrill. Thomas Merrill, who a few weeks ago was at Sebring, like six of our Trans Am cars. He didn't have the greatest of runs, but it's great to see so many top-line dr drivers there. Anunciata, look at this. We're all over Rafa Matos, who is struggling now to hold up the rest of the field and actually playing into Merrill's hands because there are about seven drivers, including this man, Barry Bowes, uh, in the ninth lap of 40, all trying to get past. Rafa Matos as they climb back up the hill through four, five, and heading towards six. Rafa's in trouble. Yeah, I mean, Rafa must not be happy with something. Normally, he's a great driver, but he's, he doesn't have the pace that Thomas Merrill does. He doesn't have the pace of Thomas Anunziata. He just doesn't have the pace right now. So maybe he's not 100% happy with the setup. And then all this racing, those top, or I guess the second, third, and fourth place guys are doing, all that racing is slowing them down, allowing the guys behind him to stay in touch with them. And then it's also just allowing Thomas Merrill to just pull out and get more of a lead. He's up to 1.3 seconds right now, which is very impressive. Back on board with Barry Bowes in 10th position. We see the whole field ahead of him, which includes Jake Drew, Sed, Mayer, Hurley, Gonzalez, and Matos. Anunciata looking now to make an inside move, but he's not close enough. And uh, likewise, Gonzalez looking to try and get past him. Tyler Gonzalez, a winner. Three wide into 10A. Borsa Jr. went all the way on the inside. Great move. He passed literally two guys in That's one break, brilliant. so that was great. 
Well, he's definitely channeling Dan at the moment, who's out, of course, tomorrow. But uh, I think the Boris said junior, senior was happy with that move. That was a great move by the newly livery Hendrix Motorsport car. Somebody hitting the grass there going on the lawn mowing expedition. And Jake Drew right there in the seventh. Trying to hold off Caleb Bacon now for CB Motorsports as we go back on board with Adrian Lostowski, currently in 11th place, just behind Barry Bowes. I'm quite surprised at how aggressive everybody's being. They're also racing, and we're, we're 10 laps into the 40 laps. Everybody's going so crazy. They're, they're really trying to get that position. I guess everybody's really confident in what program they have. But, man, normally I would expect to see these races a little bit more calm in the beginning and then fighting in the end. But we're fighting hard in the beginning, which is... Which is, I mean, it's great for the viewers, it's great for us, it's exciting. I think it's a combination of the rain yesterday, not getting qualifying in, and maybe now just reveling in the fact that we've got perfect conditions. Nice and cool, no breeze, and uh, just to meet that the tyres maybe last a little bit longer in these cooler conditions. I've had times here at Road Atlanta where it's sweltering hot. We're back on board with Lostovsky. Now let's put you in his position now. 11th place and a chance to overtake Barry Bowes, but where? Yeah, so I'm looking. At, I'm looking on the back straight there. It doesn't look like he has a lot of top speed over Barry Bowes. Looks Still like they're overtaking. Jake Drew makes it nice down the inside. Yeah, super easy, super classic. I doubt that was team orders, but just a really great move. And they're they're teammates, so they're not going to yeah. race too hard with each other because they don't want to. They don't want to take each other out. Um, but yeah, from from Adrian Lostowski's viewpoint, it doesn't seem like he's too much faster on the on the back straight than Barry Bowes. So I would say for him, just focus on getting a really good run through turn six and seven, being right up on the bumper of Barry Bowes, and then trying to make a move into 10A. But you got to be really right up on the bumper in, in seven to make that happen. Up a onboard look at the HP tuners and coke car of Pete Prochuk as he makes his way through his hundredth race, and he loves every minute of it. And has done for well since 2014. He's been racing in Trans Am. It's a great story, and he has just improved as a pro am driver. And of course, we've got the pro am championship. Is it bring back? The train. Oh, Doug Winston in the yeah. pits. Yeah, that famous uh, logo that he has been carrying for quite some time. They're looking quite close. Do you think they're looking I have no idea. The motor's on. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I have no idea. When, when there's cloths out, it usually means there's some sort of liquid. Whether yeah, oil. I wonder, maybe there's like a, an oil leak or a coolant leak, so they have the motor yeah. on to have those pumps pumping and try and see where it's spraying out. I really, I, I have no idea about that. Yep, so the race continues. Merrill took the lead at the restart from Matos, and the gap is now almost two seconds. Doing a really good job is Thomas Merrill as he crosses the strip one more time. Anunciata still chasing Matos in third. Gonzalez fourth, Hurley up to fifth now. Drew sixth, Forrestet still in seventh place. We go on board with Adam Andretti, currently in 12th, chasing down Lostowski. So we're on board with 10th, 11th, and 12th. And you know what? Let's stick with Andretti. Tell us what you see. We know Adam very well. He's in this commentary booth all the time. But let's ride with him and you see what you see. Yeah, so I'm just looking at that steering wheel. It seems like he's fighting it a little bit, but it's not anything out of the ordinary. I think it's normal. These cars, they move around a little bit with these big sidewall tires. So it seems like he's pretty happy right now. I mean, you can look in that bottom right-hand corner. You see he's not fighting the wheel too hard. So, I mean, I think he's probably pretty happy with this race car right now. He's just... Um, trying to maximize, trying to gain as much time on that car in front of them and get right up onto their bumper so he can make a move. Into six he goes, down through the gearbox, what, uh, third through there? Yes, yeah, so you're third down to second, so it should be, it should just be one downshift and then you drop another one right here. That's in a, a qualifying run. Maybe in a race run you drop it to fourth through turn six just to get a little more scoot out of there, but I would, I would personally go from third to second in turn six and then drop it to first for turn seven. So Andretti making his way down to the famous Turn 10A. It's his birthday this weekend. Celebrates it tomorrow, and he'll be racing tomorrow in TA. So what I'm going to look at? What well. I'm going to look at? Oh, whoa! Barry Bowes down the outside. He's trying to make that work. Let's see. He Thomas, or uh, sorry, Adam Andretti outbroke Barry Bowes a little bit, so he could not make that move. Barry could not make that move. So Adam Andretti did a great job holding him off. What I was going to look at is the brake trace, that yeah. little brake bar, and see how that brake release is looking. So see how the car is driving on the way into the corner. Well, that's but, a bit uh, of a wake-up call for poor old Adam. He was going strong there. Yeah, for sure. So oh, wait, great I'm racing sorry. throughout here, and uh, Ben Mayer now with the Bow Marine car making his way. That was actually not. Um, Barry Welcome Bowes, back to. Oh, man, viewers, it's fast and frenetic here 
at the moment as we back on board with Barry Bowes who was just trying to have a stab at Andretti just a moment ago so we've got racing all the way through the field from first to second and all the way down uh, right now we're watching this battle for the top 10 going on with Barry Bowes heading towards six Sorry, I made him a little mistake there going um, when we were on board with Adam Andretti. That was actually Gavin Bushell trying to make a move on Adam Andretti, the 28 car versus the 27 car. But he was still unable to make the move. But it shows that Gavin's really racy. He's really happy with his car, and he's trying to go forward. Gavin Bushell, G-Money as he's known. He's a dirt expert, has come through the ranks, and he's still new to Trans Am, but uh, making a name for himself. And there's no question that uh, he is another one of our young guns who uh, have come to Trans Am and are really showing what they could do. I've mentioned Jake Drew. Uh, well, we saw him. He's currently in sixth position. His first race coming in for Connor Zilic. He's a 2022 ARCA Series West champion. Six starts in the Truck Series and three ARCA wins at Portland uh, and also at Sonoma. So, uh, yeah, watch him, Jake Drew, coming through. And another overtake there just ahead of Keith Proch up there. I'm not quite sure who that was, but uh, it's a classic overtake at Road Atlanta. Gap at the front, still maintaining. In fact, Matos has taken a little bit out of it. The gap now 1.8 seconds, and I keep forgetting it's a long way to go in this race. Yeah, it's I mean, not even halfway. It yet. seems like we've had so much, so much things, so, so much happen so far. But we're only 14 laps in. We still have tons of racing to go. So, I mean, as these cars are burning off, the racing is going to spread out a little bit. As the tires are falling apart, the cars are going to start to do a little bit more sliding, a little bit more less comfortable things. Well, um, then let me ask you then: Where's the purple patch for the car with the? Uh, with the fuel load and the tires going off, when is that sort of, is it, what, is it halfway through and you go, ah, oh, right, I've got the sweet spot. So it depends on how well you manage your car. If you do perfectly, your last few laps should be your fastest. Okay. Because you're not burning up the tires, the tires aren't getting overheated, the tire pressures have come in to where they need to be, and they're kind of just like staying there, getting ready to go. And as the fuel burning off, you have better acceleration, better braking, better everything. And you still, you lose a little bit of tire grip with driving them, but if you don't get too much wheel spin, you don't get too much tire degradation, then you're still going to be able to go fastest right at the end of the race. Yeah, I'm looking further down the field to see who should be further up. and. It's good to see Jared Odrick uh, in 19th position. He got a third place in GT1 here uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So another guy to keep an eye on. He's just behind Keith Prochuk. Ben Mayer spoke to his dad, Jim, earlier in the weekend. And just 16 years of age. And uh, was asking him about his run here last year. He had to come from the back. A lot of people struggled last year because it was meant to be a wet race, and then it dried out. And so there was all sorts of shenanigans going on, and Mayer involved in that. He went to the front, went to the back, went to the front again. I think he, in the end, finished 15th. Uh, and he get, kind of had a similar race at Sebring, where uh, he started at the back and made it all the way through to eighth. So Ben Mayer, the man uh, of the moment, down in ninth place at the moment, just behind Caleb Bacon. Back with Brocher. There is he, Pete Brocher, in the similar HB tuners colors as Thomas Merrill. Hundred races, that's a lot. There's only twenty other drivers in Trans Am's history that have done that. Wow, yeah, I mean that's a that's a lot of commitment. I mean it's great to show it shows that he loves this series because it's a great series and he, he's committed to that, which is which is great to see. Yeah, and he calls himself a pro am driver and, and that makes sense, you know. Uh, he's not a Rafa Matos who's been a professional all his career. He's kind of learned his way and done different forms of racing, but mainly here in Let's the Let's see last if he makes a move years. going to the inside ten A. Let's see if he can get the outbreaking done. Seems like he's going to have it. He's going to almost have it before the breaking zone even happens. He might happens. get two here. <laughs> you know oh. he might. Oh. oh, careful, son. And he doesn't oh, no. do that. So he just went well. a little bit too late and then just tagged that guy right in front of him. That's super Roberto unfortunate Roberto Sabato, to see. that was at the 61. That was a shame. Yeah, I mean, that happens. It's racing. You're pushing hard. You're trying to go as late as you can. And he would have made it, but that guy in front of him was just on that apex. And he was driving his own race, so you can't blame him in any way. But... Um, yeah, Keith Protrack was going to make that corner, but he had to trail break and had to roll a lot of speed into there. And unfortunately, there was a car right on that apex. So super unfortunate. I think that might be a penalty for Keith Protrack because it, it was technically avoidable contact. Yeah. If he broke earlier, he wouldn't have hit him, wouldn't have spun him. So if Robert Sabato wants to file a complaint, that might be a, a one that he could get. I'll give you a chance to have a look at it again, see if you change your mind. <laughs> Let's see, so you see Keith Prochuk right in the middle of our screen there going around the outside of that super fast turn nine. And then he goes really late on the brakes. Oh, the tree's kind of getting in the way. Um, but yeah, you can see it looks yeah. like he got a little bit of a lockup right before he hit because he was just going in really fast. 
and just Robert Sabato was right there, and he just tagged him just ever so slightly. But when you're going, Robert Sabato is using all the tire he can. He's going as fast as he can. So if you just have a tiny little bump, it's enough to spin that car out. Yeah, and there's no question the fault is with Pete Project. Yeah, uh, and it was Sabato such a light. Line. Yeah, it was such a light hit, but he's already using 100 percent of the tire. So if you just give it a little bit extra, it's not gonna not going to be able to take it and just spin right out. Well, he's continuing to circulate, and then we're back down to the scene of the crime at 10A, and we go back to Drew, uh, Jake Drew, in fifth place at the moment, and he's got the pursuit of Josh Hurley behind him in sixth. Boris said Junior has maintained that seventh place in the Hendricks uh, painted car, and uh, he's under severe action from Caleb Bacon as well. So I was just watching out. that turn one shot, and it was cool. You could see all the cars like kind of sliding up the hill. It looks cool because they're all like drifting up the hill. In fact, it's not actually cool because it's burning off their rear tires really bad. But that just shows these guys are really pushing it hard. They're trying to put that power down as, as well as they can. Unfortunately, it looks like they overdid it a little bit, so they were kind of drifting up the hill. Um, so that's not great for the tire wear, but, I mean, you can get some lap time, and you can, you can gain a little bit by doing that. Josh Hurley under pressure in the BC motor cars, and, of course, BC... Another one of the great Trans Am teams, like Mitchell Goitberg and many others, been part of that team. And now Josh Hurley getting a chance to run. And of course, he's a driver coach, as you are occasionally, uh, Evan. And, uh, but it's, it's much more fun getting out there with whoever you've taught, uh, although, although, or, or against guys that you know you think, ah, you've watched him a few times, I could beat him. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Caleb Bacon on Borisette. Side by side action, said does the business, holds him off. But for how long? Look at this, bumper to bumper. And he's going to make he's a road down move the inside. Here we 12. go. <laughs> he backed off. He's not going to try and risk it. Ben Mayer made it stick, but he, uh, Caleb Bacon. Oh, oh, Bacon. Yeah, so he just, he was on the inside going into there. So it kind of messes up his line. So when he turns in early, it just pushes him a little wide on the exit. But but uh, Ben Mayer maximized on that, maximized on that bad run out of 12. Makes a nice move down on the inside of turn one. Yeah, a slice of Bacon on the outside there <laughs> on well, the grass. Locks up. You can see Bacon starting to really struggle. He had that big slide, a little off, lock up. So he's starting to kind of not fall apart, but maybe the car's not driving 100%. Maybe he overcooked his tires a little bit. That's actually the car I was driving here last year. So it's always, okay. it's always fun to see that so car. So there you again, go. But. Interesting stuff. So as we approach the halfway point, it's Merrill, Matos, and Enciata Gonzalez Drew. That's your top five. Uh, further down in 26, Raymond Sabato having dropped down after that uh, spill, as it were, or knock from behind by Prochuk. And uh, Odrick still in 19th position. Abate 20th. Phillips, Hodge, Young, Weisberg 24th. Caton in 25th. Darren Mock not having the race of his season so far. Down in 18th position. But he did have that broken axle at the start of the weekend. Just put him off on the back foot, I'm sure, for a while. And Adam Andretti still 13th at the moment. But it's Thomas Merrill. Merrill still maintaining that gap. Of now it's 1.7 seconds. So bit by bit, as we look at the leader, uh, Matos is doing the business of exactly what you said, which is just maintaining that yeah, gap, he's just going saving himself perhaps yeah. for the end. And of I was it. just, I'm just watching this car. That car looks really dialed in. Going up turn one, like I was talking about before, it wasn't sliding. He was nice and hooked up. The car was really, really looked easy to drive on the way in, and that's what you want. You don't want to be working these cars hard. You want to just be on a Sunday drive. That's how you go fast. Let's look at Rafa Matos's car and see how that's doing. Going over the bumps looks pretty smooth. I mean, that didn't look like anything crazy was happening either. So that's what you want to see. And he's gaining a little ever so slightly on on Thomas Merrill. You can see the gap they've got. It's over six seconds to an Incinata in third. Then Gonzalez. So they've got their own little battle because there's nobody behind them. Uh, Drew and Hurley are in a battle with said Mayer and Bacon and Bowes for the top ten. And as we look high above turn seven, the most key corner, I would argue, given that you've got to get good drive out of there to get the good drive down that long, long straight down to 10A if you want to try and make an overturn. Yeah, I mean, it's all about getting on that throttle soon. So end of the street speed on the straightaway, these cars are still gaining speed before, right before you hit the brakes. So if you can get on the throttle sooner, if you can get on the throttle 10 feet sooner, it makes the straightaway 10 feet longer. That's more speed. That's more time. Halfway point coming up here in this race for your Cube 3 Architecture TA2 race from the Mission Foods Road Atlanta Speed Tour. So much to come from this one. Merrill, Matos and Annunciata are your top three. They're being chased by Gonzalez, Drew and Hurley in the top six.
I love these drone shots. You really get an idea of the perspective and gaps that you've got between the cars and each and every one that we get. You can really see. Uh, I, I bet you'd love this view if you were racing. You'd be like, oh, I'm not that far from that guy. Yeah, I mean, it's cool to see. It's, it's something that's interesting because you never get this really yeah. anywhere. If you're, if you're walking around the track, unless you've got a private helicopter, you're not getting those <laughs> views. So it's cool to see exactly how spread out everybody is, and you can just see like kind of how the race is going from an overview, literally. Well, Jake Drew, as I mentioned, coming in for Connor Zilic, the 24-year-old, but got plenty of truck racing and ARCA experience, so another youngster on his way, another kid from Mooresville. I don't know what the heck is in the water at Mooresville. We've got six drivers in this championship from North Carolina and Mooresville. Go figure. Yeah, it's like the racing so capital We know where NASCAR's getting, digging its goal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Of course, they're racing at Coda this weekend, and our very own Connor Zilic now with Trackhouse and Silver Hair as well uh, this season, and we wish him well. Won this race last year. That was a moment for Andretti. Almost got it sideways out of seven. But that's that drive I was talking about. You know, you can see it if you push down and uh, try to get as much drive as possible. Twenty-one laps now of the forty in this Bennett Bridge Hall Classic. Of course, this is the home of Bennett Bridge Hall, and we'll see Danny Lowry in action tomorrow. A lot of friends and guests from Bennett Bridge Hall will be here for that, their home race just down the road at McDonough. And uh, we welcome them. Darren Mock also with a new paint scheme uh, for Poe Fabrications. It's got 50 guests here this weekend. Wow. And they are supplying exhaust systems to the entire series. They've done it in the other series, and now they're here with Darren and hoping to get as many exhausts uh, amongst the Trans Am drivers as possible. And we welcome back our viewers on MAV TV to the Q3 TA2 race from Road Atlanta. Road, round two of the championship, and at the moment it's Thomas Merrill up against his arch nemesis. Remember, Merrill and Matos went head to head for the championship, and at the end of Cota, somehow Merrill did the impossible and beat Matos uh, on a countback. They both have the same number of wins and score but Merrill had the better overall championship and therefore took the championship away from Matos. And I think it's going to be similar again this year as these two go head to head. And that's exactly where they are right now, which is first and second. But the young buck that is Thomas Annunziata got a first win at Coda last year. And from there on in, his confidence has blossomed. Yeah, I would say the top three running at this race right now are going to be the top three for the championship contenders. Harry Gonzalez, he's a really great driver. I don't know if he's doing the whole year. I don't know if he's doing every race. And if he's not doing all the races, he's not going to be a championship contender. Um, but those top three, I think, are really going to be doing all the races and going to be fighting for this championship. Ben Mayer now looking to try and see if he can get past Boris Said Jr. and two teenagers going at it. One 18, the other 16. Ben Mayer spoke to his dad, Jim, this weekend. And his brother Alex, uh, just 11 years old, he's a racer too. Though Dad thinks he's more of a basketball star, so he's going to keep the basketball in Alex's hands and uh, support Ben in his racing. And Ben has proved beyond a doubt, coming in here at just 15 years of age, that at 16 he is going to be a name for the future. I love watching Ben Mayer on Instagram. He's always doing something he's cool. Doing he's doing something driving Trans Am, he's racing dirt bikes, jumping. Jumping those, driving can am like the off road side by side. He's or always shooting doing somebody something. with his gel gun. Yeah. yeah, he's always doing something <laughs> fun. So I mean, he's living the dream at 16 years old, and he's doing great in this race, eighth place. He was running in fifth, his highest fifth. Um, so hopefully he can get back there to the end. Yeah, great kid too. Yeah, I spoke to him on the grid before the race, and looking forward to this one. He's also going to be doing some truck racing later in the year. He's going to be doing Long Beach. He might even bump into uh, Matt Brabham, another Trans Am driver, because Super Trucks uh, are sort of oh, the yeah, display yeah. race. There's like the, the trucks race. that do the yeah, jumps. Over, I, over I don't, jumps and stuff. I don't know too, too much about that series, but I just see them flying through the air. And that's you can so see cool. him doing that. Yeah, that yeah I mean, like, <laughs> all, all the cool racing things for sure. So we're getting down to the business end of this second round of the championship. The field has spread out. The gap between Merrill and Matos has gone up again. And I don't know whether that's Matos not uh, being able to go as fast because the now the gap is, what, almost three seconds. So it was 1.7 seconds just a few laps ago. And now suddenly uh, we've gone all the way up to almost three seconds. We look at Tyler Gonzalez, the man in fourth place, chasing down 
Uh, and Unciata just ahead of him in the black and green car. Tyler Gonzalez is pushing hard. I'm watching that car. He's using all of the racetrack, going through turn 12. He was maximizing everything. He's really pushing hard to catch all the way up to Thomas and Unciato and try and make a move. They're teammates, so they, they got to be respectful to one another, but they're also like the closest competition because they're driving the exact same car. So it's really all down to the same car, same people. It's all about the driver. So these are great to see the teammate battle, but they got to be respectful. So, but Thomas, um, or sorry, Tyler Gonzalez is pushing really hard. Yeah, Tyler Gonzalez, uh, interesting guy. He's not run these powerful Trans Am cars that much. In fact, just this last week, he was a winner in the Master MX-5 Cup Championship here uh, and won at Sebring. So, you know, he's uh, jumping in and out of different cars at a young age, and that's exactly what you should do. Uh, but he's second in the championship at the moment. With Zillage gone, uh, there was a chance at the beginning of the day uh, that he could be leading the championship. But with Merrill and Matos where they are, Merrill started in six, and Matos is, of course, up there as well. So it's likelihood, if they stays as it is at the moment, that Matos would take the lead of the championship, but Gonzalez would go to second or stay second, and Zillage would drop down. Yeah, I don't quite remember where Merrill finished at Sebring, but I know Matos finished second. Or was he third? Yeah, Matos third. was third. Second, but, yeah. So Matos got a lot of points at Sebring. So I think Merrill was sixth. So he was sixth. Okay, so yeah, I think Matos right now in this position, I think Matos would jump to the leader of the championship, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote. But that's what I think. Plenty of overtakes going on. Another Ford Mustang going through that. That uh, looks like Lostowski's Yeah, car. that's Adrian Lostowski on Mass Gray. It's hard to get used to Lostowski's new colors. I'm used to that oh, red that? interior that? and red outdoor as well. There's a car parked on the outside of the Cube 3 architecture turn 5. Ah. It, it looked like blue. Maybe it was... I don't know. I don't want to... Oh, it's Borset Jr. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, oh, Camaro out. And he was going so well in seventh place at one point, And that's going to yeah. throw things in the air a little bit. He was in seventh. Ben Mayanam moves up to seventh. Yeah, that's definitely a mechanical failure, and it, it's, it, it's crazy because it's the same. He's the teammate to Connor Mosak. Same mechanical failure. Not the same mechanical failure, no, but, but a mechanical, mechanical failure mechanical in the failures, same yeah. spot of the racetrack. So that's super unlucky. And as you say, it was just on the exit uh, or just after the Q3 S's uh, that he's pulled to a side. We've got a, a local yellow. Uh, we haven't gone full yellow yet. Yeah, and we're now we have. Yellow. So we're now under caution again. Our second major caution of the day. Jake Drew in the silver hair, number seven. Uh, going through his paces, he's now fifth, and now he's got uh, nobody following him as closely as Boris said is out. I wonder what happened to that uh, that car because it's a very interesting place to stop. So it seems like he pulled it there. So it wasn't a suspension thing, I don't think. I think it was probably like a motor issue. Maybe the motor died and he couldn't he couldn't limp it to a uh, a further up spot, and he just like had to kind of stop there because he ran out of speed from rolling. Um, so it's interesting. I don't really know exactly what happened to that car, but Silver Hair, I know, definitely tries to build. They build great cars, so it's very just unlucky to have two coincidences in one race. So it looks as though we've got a couple of cars as well uh, stopped on track. Uh, well, Boris said we knew uh, in the 75, but also the 8 uh, of uh, Thomas Ellis. Uh, uh, Ellis, excuse me, Thomas Ellis uh, from Florida uh, is out in the number 8 as well. And of course, he's one of the SLR. Uh, youngsters coming in to the series. So two cars out, we're under caution for the second time, but at a much more crucial time in the race. This is 24 laps gone. Merrill, Matos, and Anciati, your first three. And Gonzalez drew now up to fifth, early up to sixth. Ben Mayer uh, and Bacon look good all weekend long. And they're now seventh and eighth, and we'll be smelling a chance of some big points here. Uh, Bose now up to ninth, Michelle tenth, Lostowski just outside the top ten in eleventh, and Andretti twelfth. Rogers now up to thirteenth. Uh, Good run so far by Will Rogers. He's just ahead of Prochak in fourteenth position, and Darren Mock has moved up to fifteenth place. So everybody gets a little bit of a, a respite and a little rest here. And alongside me, uh, Evan Slater, watching the action, got fourth place here last year and uh, wants to be out there, I'm sure, but uh, it's great to have his insight uh, in this intriguing race. It feels like we've had the championship going for a long time because it's only round two, but they're so on it, so dialed in. Yeah, they're, they've been, they're pushing hard, and I think it's just there's so much experience here. So it's like they're not... I mean, there's obviously a few guys that are new to the cars, but they know the cars well at this point. They know that what you need to do to a championship, to win a championship, is push hard every single race. So they're obviously focused on finishing because that's what you need to do to be succeeding in a championship. But you also need all the points you can get. So a lot of experience. So I think that's why they're being able to be so racy, just because they all know exactly what they should be doing at this stage. This time last year in the wet dry race, I mentioned Connors Lich, as we know, uh, won the race. Thomas Merrill was second. 
and Rafa Matos was third. So no surprise to see those two at the front again. Brent Cruz was fourth and, oh, Evans Slater, fifth place. Always love coming here, though. One of your favorite tracks? This is definitely one of my favorite tracks. I mean, it's it's so much fun. There's so much elevation. It's fast. It's like there's it's flowing. There's It's high commitment. There's no runoff. So if you make a mistake, it's very consequential, but you need to push it to the limits. You need to be really driving hard to gain all that time. So I think it really it amplifies all the great drivers and all the great crews because it's really difficult to set up a car from around here because you need a car you need a car with a good platform so it needs to be really stiff like the springs they can't be super soft so you have to have the car so it's not moving around too much through the high speed turns but then it also has to be kind of absorbing because you got those big bumps you got the turn three the jump kind of in the apex there you got the bumpy on the exit of the turn five cube three corner five so it's difficult to set up a car around here, so it shows what the, where the group, the great crews are, the great mechanics, the great engineers, and obviously the great drivers, because it's difficult to drive a car fast around here. Well, as you can see, the uh, repair, recovery trucks are with uh, Boris uh, Jr., uh, but it's going to be another lap, I think, uh, before we get underway, so then that's 26 of the 40 done. It's certainly not a sprint to the finish at that point. It's not, uh, unless it's 10 laps, I wouldn't say you can go hell-bent for leather. You've got to be a little bit careful, haven't you? Yeah, I would say with these cars and these tires, the last five laps, you're really pushing 100%. The five laps at the end, that's when you're giving it all you got. Ten laps, you can start pushing it pretty hard, but you still need to make sure you have a car for the end. All right, let's go down to the pit lane. And Nick Tucker, of course, who runs the Nitro Motorsport team, he's uh, with Benson's. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. I'm down here with Nitro Motorsports team owner Nick Tucker. He's got a car in second, third, and fourth. We know the restarts here get kind of crazy. What are you telling your drivers? We just got to press forward and do the best we can here. What are they saying? Because I'm hearing you talking back and forth on the radio. Who are you talking to specifically? Uh, Thomas Nunziata. Yeah, we're just uh, we're struggling. we got a brake fan issue that, uh, that uh, we're fighting. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to press here and see what we can do. Well, good luck out there when they go green. Jonathan, we know that the uh, Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta restarts can get kind of crazy. Maybe Evan can tell us his strategy if he were to take this restart. Well, he's been telling us all day his strategy. He doesn't want to give too much away. I mean, you know, he was fifth here last year. But come on, let's, uh, I'll tell you, I'll put you in a different position this time. Uh, I'll put you in Rafa's position because Ooh. Rafa's got a, another bite at the cherry, so to speak. The gap was three seconds yeah. before now. And Rafa knows the way this race has gone that unless he has a poke at Merrill soon, Merrill's going to do what he would do to him, which is get away quickly. For sure. I think I would argue that Merrill's got the better car today. So if Matos like is going to make an impact, he needs to get past him and block him. For sure. I think I think that defending can be really great because that can, if he can get in front and just defend so he can't pass him, then obviously that's the, the win if he can hold it off for the 14 laps we have to go. But for Matos, it's, it's difficult to get these restarts right because... In the way we have the rule books here, the leader can just kind of take off before the green. So the leader sets when What's the green the flag goes. How long have you got between? So there's cones coming down the hill. I don't know if we can get a good camera angle of it, but there's two yeah. sets of cones. So it can. That's kind of the start box. You have to take off somewhere in that box. So uh, Merrill can just do it whenever he wants. So Matos has to be right up behind him, paying great attention. And like the second he sees that car start to like sit back and start to go, that's when he has to floor it and try and get the best run he can. So it's very hard to be right on their tail going into turn one. But if you can make that happen, if you can be right up on their tail, he can try and peek out to the inside of Mission Foods turn one, or he can just try and stay, or uh, uh, Rafa Matos can try and stay on the driving line and did what Merrill did to him, which is go around the outside of that turn one. Well, still some work to be done on the said car. As you can see, there is the incident just on the exit of five, and they're still just lifting it onto the uh, recovery truck. Now, I'm um, just wondering. Doug Winston's still in Doug the pits. Winston. Oh, it's still there. Gosh, he's been in there I wonder for if a he, while I wonder now. if he went out and then came back in, or he's still trying to fix an issue. I, I don't know. So, Doug Winston getting a, a nice windshield uh, clean as well. It well, looked well, like they, were, they had some fluid they were topping up, so I don't know if it was power steering fluid. It didn't look like an oil. And maybe it was power steering fluid. I don't know what that was, but they were definitely topping something up in there. So maybe he has a slow leak. So he went back on the track, and then he's still just slowly leaking something out. So he had to uh, come back in and get it filled up again. I really don't know. So we're under, we're under caution here at uh, Road Atlanta here in the Mission Foods Road Atlanta Speed Tour. Of course, the TA2 Championship this year with our new sponsor as a title sponsor in Cube 3 Architecture. And it's great to have them on board. And plenty of great stories, new drivers doing different things, new sponsors coming in. Will Rogers with uh, new sponsors this weekend. And uh, 
certainly making an impact in this race as well. I mean, been on board with Adrian Nostowski and Barry Bowes. Caleb Baking having a good run too. He's in eighth at the moment. And Ben Mayer uh, in seventh at the moment. And any one of those could be in the top five before the end of this race. It really is an open race there. If you like that look of the Ginetta, our new pace car, there's a Ginetta race coming up later in the day. So uh, why not join us for that? Well, we haven't talked too much. Anunciata, we keep talking about the battle between Merrill and Matos, but Anunciata is, is, is not a shy violet, is he? Not, he knows when he gets a chance, he'll put his nose in there. For sure, but we were talking, or when Ben was talking to Nick Tucker in the pit lane, he said he was having brake fan issues. So right. these cars, the brakes aren't great. The brakes are pretty small, so they have to work really hard to get these big cars slowed down, so they get super hot. Um, so the brake fans are kind of fans that blow blast air on them to try and cool them down, but it seems like he had a failure, so that might be hurting his braking performance. Well, Mike Cope, of course, making hay at the front of this race. Let's head down to them in the pit lane with Ben Sissel. Yeah, I'm with Bowser here with Mike Cope racing. Thomas Merrill's crew chief. What's Thomas saying on the radio? Because it seems like he's just the class of the field. Yeah, the uh, Cope race cars, HP tuners, uh, Ford Mustangs, been running pretty good all weekend. And uh, we've been just tweaking on it here and there throughout the whole weekend, and we hit on something pretty good here. And um, he ain't said a whole lot. The only thing he said was 10-4. Nice. Well, you've got teammates behind you with Nitro Motorsports, who I believe are also running Cope chassis. So Cope seems to have figured out something here at Road Atlanta. Well, it's, all, it's, it's thanks for all these guys and girls here. They put in uh, tremendous hard work and... Uh, they, uh, it's that's all that's where it's at. It's just hard work in the shop and getting after it. Well, this is the most relaxed I've ever seen this coat pit crew. So they've got something here. They know something. So Jonathan, back up to you for the restart. You, you could say they could cope with the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all weekend. Anyway, uh, I want to talk about Ben Mayer again. Uh, we'll keep an eye, of course, on Thomas Merrill. But he is once. I mean, he is in easy street. Once he gets the lead, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't doubt against Thomas Merrill. It's when he's when he's fighting for second or third, I worry about it. Yeah, they're happy with their car, so I suspect that he'll get a great get a great, great restart and just make some really good good few laps and just pull that gap out and then just start managing it. Nice. Lights are out in the pace cars. So that means we're going racing this time. Well, this could be the pivotal moment of this race, certainly for Rafa Matos if he's going to make uh, inroads and get his third win here at Road Atlanta. He's got to make a big impact on the Coke car of Thomas Merrill, who leads the field now down the hill to get the restart underway. On board with Barry Bowes. He's got Caleb Bacon just ahead of him. They uh, tighten up the field now. Merrill goes through the cones and starts to accelerate away. And he's Merrill got a great a restart. Holy start. cow. Yeah, that's exactly what Thomas Merrill needs, but Rafa Matos didn't get a great start, so he's under pressure from behind. Whoa, Tyre Gonzalez down Gonzalez the inside of Thomas Annunziato. Nicely done, and he's not Ooh. happy. Oh, and he's Bumped second his teammate, wide. I don't know. <laughs> Somehow Gonzalez gets slide-tracked and just slides his way back to competitiveness, but Annunziata is through. I mean, that's a completely legal move from Trans Am. It's kind of a questionable move, bumping your teammate <laughs> out of the way. But, I mean, he made it work. And both the cars are still on the track, so not, no harm, no foul. But, uh, yeah, but exactly. uh, not the ideal thing to do to your teammate. No, and a good restart from Drew as well. He's fifth. Josh Hurley maintains his six, and Mayer still seven. 29. Now we're getting the battle for the sprint with 10 laps to go after this. And... Really, is it now hell-bent for leather, or can you still just kind of hold back a little? You're still holding back a little bit. You're probably pushing like 97%. I mean, Adrian Lostasi's not he holding back. Like he's he's, doing he's that. sliding that thing. He's trying to get the power down as best as he can. But what I would personally be doing is not 100%. 97% probably. So pushing still super hard, but no sliding, no burning up the tires, no burnouts like Adrian Lostasi just yep. did. Trying to keep the car 100%. The last five laps is when I really get start getting it 100%. Caleb Bacon looks like he got some front-end damage there. Oh, he there. did, didn't he? I think I saw a lock-up from him on the way up the hill and th through turn two because there's all the chaos happening well, in front of him. Well, and that dirt you see on the left-hand side was when he went just wide here yeah, when yeah, he came out sure. the exit and got onto the grass for a second. So another lap completed. Merrill and Matos going at it, but Matos did not get the restart he wanted and now has got pressure from Annunciata, Gonzalez, Drew and Hurley, the top six. The 27th going through is Barry Bowes. Good run so far. We're back on board with him and the ASIO data on board. Pump of smoke out the back of Bacon. Yeah, so that's two lockups in a row in the exact same spot. The problem is, so when you lock... Oh, oh no, Rafa Matos. Matos! Matos has gone off! Going slow in the exit of turn one. I wonder if and he's And he's got gone. gravel. There was gravel. He's, he went into the gravel. Yeah. 
I don't know what happened. Hopefully we can get a replay of that. Oh. But that's oh, super man, disappointing for so Rafa Matos. He, he's who and I he's was, got a puncture. Yeah, he's got a puncture. I wonder if there was contact there when he was racing hard with everybody. You can see that car's kind of looks like it's sitting down a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it's moving all around. That's no good. He's he's gonna have to head back to the pits. But ah, uh, oh, Paul Al Rafa Matos, uh, two-time champion with a. Yeah, he's riding that thing on the rim. Yep. So I wonder if, if if somebody around him tried to make a really aggressive move. Maybe they had a little bit of contact. I don't know. It's hard to tell without any. Uh, any uh, visuals of it, but I think what I've, I had to, had to, if I had to guess, what I would say is Thomas, um, sorry, Rafa Matos was on the outside of turn one, and then one of the guys on the inside gave him a little love tap and knocked that uh, knocked that tire off the rim. Andretti locking up slightly there. He's behind Barry Bowes. Adam Andretti. Lostowski on board, under the bridge, and onto the main straight again. But the big news story is disappearing from contention. The two-time champion that is Rafa Matos, the pole man, is out of this race with a puncture. That means that Anunciata is up to second and two seconds well, 2.8 seconds behind the leader. Gonzalez now on a podium position. Drew, Hurley and Mayer, the top six. It's going to be a really interesting finish, this one. Hurley now comes into play. Bacon's been there all day long. Slight damage to the front of the car, but it's not slowing him down. Yeah, that's just cosmetic damage. That's... He's, he's still got a great race car underneath him. A little bit of, little bit of Rubens racing, but that, yeah. that car is still perfectly fast. And he's showing. He's looking. He's all up on the bumper of uh, Ben Mayer, trying to figure out a way. Oh, bumps Ben Mayer a little bit going into turn six. I think he got the move done. I, hopefully they both stayed on the track. They did. But, um, yeah, a little bit of love tap going into there in that braking zone. So, all sorts of drama in this one. Marilyn and Seattle and Gonzalez were waiting on the battle between Bacon and Mayer. Mayer doing everything in his power, the 16-year-old, to hold off Caleb Bacon, who is just 18 himself. What great racing this has been. We've lost Matos, we've lost Conor Mosak. And uh, so, big attrition rate in terms of the big contenders expected to win this race. Uh, no surprise to see Thomas Merrill in the HP Tuners 26 Coke car at the front. But uh, it's not over yet. He does have a solid gap of almost three seconds, and let's see if he can maintain it. Almost four seconds. He's got yeah. a very solid gap. He's he's just checked out driving his own race. I'm wondering who else could come through. It's good to see uh, Bouchelle coming up in 10th uh, position now. Andretti up to ninth. That's a better run from Adam. Uh, who, of course, as I said earlier, went off in practice onto the grass and had a slightly shortened uh, run in his first practice. Then, of course, qualifying was uh, cancelled, so he hasn't had a lot of time in that car at all, and he'll be racing also in gap. TA. Yeah, you can see the gap. It's ridiculous. He's got a mile. Yeah, he is gone, isn't he? 3.6 seconds. So at, at this point, he knows he's got a fast race car. He's not pushing that thing at all. He's trying to minimize mistakes, like 0% chance of mistakes. He's, so he's not pushing hard. He's making sure these tires are staying good. Rafa Mato is coming back out of the pits, did a quick tire change. But so it not, really was as simple as that, just a puncture. Yeah, so I wonder, I mean, tires sometimes go flat on their own, but it's very yeah. unlikely. Yeah. So unless he gets like, oh, the 25 in the Q3 Architecture S's. That's uh, Chris Durbin in Cameron from Cameron, Virginia, in the uh, Amsoil Chevrolet, getting turned around. Oh, oh Ty, Ty Young. Young. Involved as well. That's another tire failure. You can see the tire wow. sitting right there. I don't know what happened there. That looks like at turn one as well. So we've had lots of drama. Another caution, third caution. No surprise. Maybe that's not turn one. I can't really tell where that is. I, it looks like kind of turn one to me. It looks like the top of turn one, but it's hard to tell from that. So corner we're under angle. caution again. Thomas Merrill has built a three, almost, well, four-second lead. Let's have a look at what happened, Evan. So I don't know what incident we're looking at here, but... Oh! oh that's Ty going Oh, so on. that's turn six. So yeah, it looks like that tire failed, and he just couldn't get the thing slowed down and just went straight into that outside wall in turn six. Yeah, I was wrong about turn one. Um, yeah, it looks like a mechanical failure. It looks like that tire let down, because that tire just... You can see it, see it laying on the track, and it's not on the car. So, um, yeah. So, you join us back on MAP TV and more drama. Another caution is out, as you can see from those double yellows. And uh, we've had a couple of cars going off. Merrill still leads this race. He had got a four second lead over Annunciata. Matos has gone out with a puncher. He's back out on track, but out of contention. So, all sorts of drama 
on track and we've now got what eight laps to go in this one Merrill in control but he's going to have to do a really good restart yet again and now the hard charging youngster that is Thomas Anunciata is right there with him Gonzalez who's looked good all day was second in Sebring remember beating Rafa Matos at Sebring and is second in the championship so he will want to go one better and then there's Jake Drew just coming in for Connor Zilich for the first time in Trans Am I'm sure you remember your first race at Trans Am but what a performance from Jake. Yeah, I mean, he's doing a great job. Oh, Rafa Mata's yeah, back in the pitch, and Ben Mayer is also in the pitch as oh, well. Oh, wow, Ben Mayer, who was very much in contention for Nitro. Gosh, it started so well as a weekend for Nitro, and it literally has popped like a Nitro popper. Yeah, he's getting out of the car. He, yeah, he put his window net down, which normally means he's getting out of the car, but they're jacking it up. It's like they're both doing the same thing to the car, so I don't know what's going on there. Um... The car looks good, obviously, from the outside, but they're looking at maybe the rear end, rear differential, something in the something in the rear suspension. I don't really know. Shame. Uh, the 16-year-old was really on it as well. And, uh, Dad here this weekend and, uh, telling me all about what was going on with he and his brother. And he's a very laid-back character, Ben. He's great to work it's with. It's so interesting. Two cars on the same team, both looking at the exact same problem. The, both the cars are jacked up. They're looking at that rear suspension on the right-hand side. So I don't know. And as always, we've be. got an extra mechanic in Tony Garcia, who's literally inside the wheel there. <laughs> Good on you. Come on, Tony. Oh, you can see something dripping out of the bottom there. Yeah. Right? I see a little bit of fluid on the ground there. Well, either way... When it's as long as this, it's pretty much terminal. We know that anyway because he's already come in for a puncture and they're looking at the same tire that went down. So, it, you know, when you have a puncture like that, it's very rare. It's just rubber. Uh, once you get on the rim like that, all sorts of things. So, yeah, when you get on the rim, and he's still driving it back to the paddock. I mean, on your streetcar, you always hear, like, anybody tell you, if you get a flat tire, stop driving and don't drive on the rim. But here, we're racing. We're trying to get the thing yeah. back to the paddock. So you need to drive on the rim. But that tire's flopping around. He's not going to be going fast on the back straightaway, but he's going 80 miles an hour and with that rubber like ripping around. It can very easily mess something up. It can break something. It can, it can hit the shock too hard, mess up the shock. There's so many things that could happen. They're also looking at the front of the car, so I don't... Very interesting. Well, an opportunity for Matos to potentially get a win here has all gone up in flames. Oh, they're topping up his brake fluid. Got yeah, so putting brake fluid in by the looks of things. Hmm. I wonder if he like boiled his brake fluid and then some air you came out and then he ran out of brake fluid. I don't know what that could be. I don't really know why. Brake fluid shouldn't really be going away. It shouldn't be burning. So, so I, I mean, it's not a good thing to have to add brake fluid in the middle of a race. No, definitely not. So it's slow caution, but we're going to get into a full sprint race. And now it is go time, Evan. I've been asking you how long it is before you finally go, right, I'm off for it now. Now and it's you time can to see go Ty Young uh, still uh, with work to do. So it's going to be what? Maybe, maybe one more, two, two laps before we get underway. So it really is going to be a five, six uh, lap sprint to the finish. Yeah, but we're also, we have 15 minutes left in the race. Oh, that's a good so, point. So we might do it be a time race depending on how long this caution is. We're running on average like a minute 25 second laps around here, so it would probably still right now be a lap race, but if we're under caution for much longer, it can turn into a timed race. But yeah, at this point, you're getting out there, you're all bunched up, and you're pushing hard. It's This is like exactly what Thomas Merrill did not want because he already had his nice four second lead. He was happy to just cruise to the finish line, but now he's all bunched up. All the guys that he's competing with are right behind him. So this is not what he wants, but they're going out and they're going to be pushing as hard as they can because they know it's a pretty short run to the finish line, and this is when it counts. It's okay if you're. It's great to be a lead in the whole race, but you got to lead the last lap. So that's what they're going to be focused on. They're going to be focused on pushing super hard and making sure their cars out front for as long as they can be in this stage. Well, Road Atlanta in its 54-year history, when it opened in 1972, has held 40 Trans Am races like this, and they're always. Interesting, that's for sure. All the greats have raced here from the Trans Am series, and now it's becoming fastly a new era for Trans Am. We've got so many great youngsters making their name and really looking forward to the season ahead. Great to have a spring race at Road Atlanta. And, of course, it's the home of Bennett Bridge Hall, and this, the Bennett Bridge Hall Classic from Road Atlanta. And a full weekend of great racing. I was looking at the YouTube live chat, and I see somebody pointed out exactly what happened to Rafa Matos that I completely did not realize could have happened. 
he popped the tire, and the tire ripped the brake line open. Ah. So then they had to fix the brake line. That was where the fluid dripping in the rear suspension was, and they had to put more brake fluid in. You see, the internet, it's a vast pit of knowledge. Welcome back to our MAV TV viewers, and we're still under caution. You've missed nothing, and we're going to have a doozy of a finish here. We're still clearing up Ty Young's car, which means we're still under caution, so therefore that's why we're on board with Barry Bowes going slow. Uh, but the top three, let's just uh, confirm it are on your top left. Uh, it's Merrill, Annunciata, and Gonzalez. Drew is fourth, Hurley fifth, and Bacon now in the top six. Let's head down to Ben Sissel with the latest Frog Pit Lane. Well, thank you. I'm here with Joe Clary. You can hear the Nitro guys talking. That was very frantic. You had Ben Mayer coming in, and then you had, uh, who was in second place, Rafa Matos. What was happening out there? Well, I don't really know because, unfortunately, I'm crew chief in for Michelle, so I don't even have, can't hear what's happening, so I'm diving in because we're just a team of guys that all worked our butts off to be here. We don't care what car it is. We are a team. But um, something happened to the brakes on Ben's, uh, and then the 60 had a dang on tire go flat unfortunately while I was up front but it doesn't really matter I mean we're here as a team it doesn't care what nitro car has a problem we're all going to help each other I love it so then you hear Joe Clary's jumping in changing tires changing brakes on Ben Mayer's car and uh, you can see that it's kind of frantic down here with a lot of tools just kind of laying around that's not something you see too often in a Trans Am if they're coming into the pits uh, they're not doing well because it's a 100-mile sprint race. So, Evan Slater, we could use your expertise. What's Ben Mayer and Rafa Matos trying to do out there? Back to you. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, those guys, they understand that, okay, they just lost a bunch of time going into the pits. So, hopefully they didn't go a lap down. I suspect they did. If they went a lap down, I hate to say they're screwed, but it, it's not great. Look, it's well, not looking great for them. Because <laughs> you would have to, yeah, I know, you would have to pass all the guys and then pass them again. So, if they did go a lap down, it's really difficult to yeah. make that up within five laps if they're not a lap down that's great because they're at the back of the field and everybody's bunched up so it's like okay how many cars can i pass in five laps at that point but if you're a lap down it's kind of just it's a difficult situation that you're in because you can't pass everybody and then pass them again and go around the lap and lap them so with the tires as they are now starting to go down i mean do you how, how do you do more careful warming up of them or is it more must like you need to do more several cars coming into the pits as well three cars coming into the pits yes yeah, so. so they're coming into the pits because we have a rule if you're a lap down you come gotcha. through the pits so i guess this is an easy way to tell if raf is a lap down yep right is that we'll soon find out is that him yeah no he's out of the pits so he's not a lap down oh, oh we, we, no that's another puncture yeah, there's in. a nitro card 51 darren oh, mock he's got a darren puncture Mock's too got a punch it. God, if it wasn't for oh, bad yeah. luck they wouldn't have any yeah nitro is not having a good day with those tires but they're all the same tire that failed they're all Interesting. that. Interesting, yeah, that right, right rear. Yeah, that right rear. So I, I wonder, I mean, going over that, that turn three. Is that a choice of PSA three, or is it just a So it could be the PSI. It could be that turn three curb in the beginning of the race. We're at the end of the race, but the beginning of the race, it could have messed up the sidewall. Uh -huh. Because you hit that jump and then the car lands and it's super aggressive. So in the beginning of the race, the tire pressures are low. So it could have just give, given the sidewall a pinch flat because these huge sidewall tires. That could have been what it is. But, um, yeah, super unfortunate for Darren Mock to have that, that issue. Let's head down to Ben Sissel once again as the Pro Fabrication car comes in. Well, you can see here we're with Darren Mock, who just came in with the right rear tire down. That's Darren Mock with ProFabrication.com. Darren had to start in the back with a broken axle for qualifying and then moved all the way up to, I think, 12th or 13th. And then it uh, looks like he cut a right rear tire. So I don't know what it is about the Nitro Motorsports, but it looks like they have having a lot of right rear tire problems. And uh, they, they can't get this tire off. There we go. The tire is off, and it looks like those little brake coolers are kind of in the way of them putting the tire back on as they have to manually put in the lugs. The, the uh, lugs were not glued on like we see in some of the stock car racing, so he's coming out. But Darren Mock and this beautiful pro fabrication headers and exhaust Ford Mustang with Nitro Motorsports, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. He stayed in, came into the transition lane, pitted. That's hard to do under this duress. And now they're working hard to try to get him back out there on the lap. They're sending him out now. And you can see there that the attire was really rubbing against it. But it's all happening down here. Then we come up here to Ben Mayer, who's back into the pits. You can see they're looking at the car, and it looks like... Uh, Joe Claridge looking around, not quite sure what's happening, but uh, Jonathan, I'm going to send it back up to you. 
Yeah, an unusual day at the office and a shout out to Pro Fabrication uh, of North Carolina. Uh, they brought 50 guests here this weekend. Big new sponsorship deal for Darren Mark and for the whole paddock, in fact, as they're looking to get as many exhaust systems on all the cars. So we welcome them on board, but not a great day at the office, as we say. But we're going to have a doozy of a finish here, Evan Slater. Uh, we're under caution, and, and this is getting long now. These guys are getting impatient. They're hot, they're tired, and there's a race to be won. And they're ready to go, though. So, they're, yes, they're hot, they're tired, they're everything like that, but they know that this is the time when it counts. Eight minutes to go or four laps. So if we go green soon, it should still be four laps, but it's looking more like it'll be a time race. So I imagine when we go green, there'll be about, five minutes to go don't quote me on that that's what i think um but it's going to be very quick so not a lot of time so thomas merrill is focused on going as fast as he can as clean of laps as he can oh rafa Matos in the pits because he is a lap down so that's super unfortunate for him it's gonna he's gonna be a, have a hard time making up any places on this restart besides everybody else that's a lap down so he's just gonna be going racing the guys that are the same lap down but then he'll get you can't get further up to the lead lap. At but, this point. but an but important factor to remember in Trans Am, you know this all too well, is that we've got a massive change in the point system a couple of years ago. So if you win, you get over 100 points, but all the way down the field, you'll score points. So, you know, he's thinking long term as well. So, yeah, so the reason why he's staying out there and not just like calling it quits is because, yeah, he can still get points. So, although he's a lap down, he can try and pass all the other cars that are a lap down and just get more and more points for that. It's not going to be a big points haul, but it's still a little bit. And in the, in, round two of a 12 race championship any if you can get five extra points that can be huge and that can be really beneficial so i'll tell you what it's still a long way to go yet and what i mean by that is you can see ty young's cars on the recovery vehicle but they've got a you know um they've got a few more minutes before they're going to be clear on that yeah like you say seven minutes on the clock it seems like the car's on the thing down. though so basically they just have to drive that off the track and then drive the two other the thing so the maybe maybe this off lap. the track so yeah maybe this lap if not definitely the next lap as you can see, conditions absolutely perfect. Just a few, uh, perfect here. Just a few puffy clouds. I know that those on the east coast are, are dealing with a lot of rain at the moment and heavy weather. And likewise in the north of America, uh, some big heavy thunderstorms. But it's perfect conditions here, having had rain overnight last night. And of course, we've got a full weekend of racing here, as well as the TA race coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, that'll be the feature race on the day, but right now it's TA2 and it's hell bent for leather with 550 brake horsepower. Former champion Thomas Merrill out there, out front, looking to do the business. Brent Cruz still not here, and of course the current champion uh, had uh, an illness at the start of the season. We haven't seen it since, so we're hoping he'll be back and fit and, uh, and full fettle for the next one. Uh, but again, um, it will be. Interesting when he gets back in the seat for Nitro Motorsport to see how he slots in, what the fitness looks like, and he's going to be a factor, the youngster, uh, having had a fantastic season. So we're going round again. One so more this is interesting. So we have five minutes and 45 seconds to go. Yep. But the safety car, oh, so the Trans Am cars, they can run 125s around here, but the safety car, they're not going that fast. So it probably takes three Maybe yeah, three we might and a half get one minutes. Lap. So we might get one lap, but I don't know if in this series they would they start it with one lap to go and then do the checker the next lap. Hopefully they would. Yeah, I hope so but, too. Well, we'll find out. That would be minute. really exciting because <laughs> that that would be a that would be a green checkered, which is like always the mo one of the most exciting things in racing because it's the last lap. Everybody's super bunched up and they're all trying to make as many places as they can, and it's just. It sometimes is chaos or sometimes crashes when that happens, but it also is very exciting because everybody's pushing super hard. They're using every single thing they have to try and, to try and gain those positions. Great to see Will Rogers there now in 11th position in the number six car. So Will Rogers in the Caldwell Coaches uh, Adolfi Productions Ford Mustang and uh, having a good day out as uh, 11th place will be one of his best finishes in TA2. So, Merrill, biding his time, grew up in Salinas in California. And Merrill right now, I mean, if, if this was me, I'd be on the radio being like, man, they shouldn't start this race. They would be super <laughs> yeah, let's unsafe. finish it. Let's get done. <laughs> like, it would be super dangerous if they started the race. Well, we just heard from race control that there's going to be two laps of racing. So oh, gonna, really? Great. They're going to give you, yeah, exactly. So they're giving they're a little give it a time extension. Run, you know. And I guess that's fine because when the clock ticks down, that's, that's just a case of when the, the race should finish. Um, but, of course, that could be in the middle of a lap. It could be at the start of a new lap. It yeah. could be at the end of it. So they've got a little bit of leeway there. And quite rightly, the race director said, look, okay, uh, we've been under caution for a while. A one lap 
dash could be also unsafe and that everybody's going, yeah. you know, uh, too desperate. Whereas two laps gives you a chance to get up to speed yeah. carefully and safely. And then that last lap, okay. I think that's the right decision. I think, I'm super happy about that because yeah. the one-lap shootouts are a little bit crazy, a little too crazy. <laughs> Two laps is perfect. So these guys are really going to be fully focused forward. Thomas Merrill is going to be really trying to hold up Thomas Annunziato as much as he can. And Annunziato, Tyler Gonzalez, and Jake Drew, they're going to be trying to make as much headway as they can. Well, it's interesting. Thomas Merrill started this weekend in sixth place on 80 points just uh, what, five behind Austin Green. He'll take Green out of the picture because Green isn't here this weekend. Uh, Annunciata currently in fourth on 88 points, but Annunciata in second place uh, at the moment. So that's going to be interesting. So a lot to play for, even though it's early in the season. And away goes Merrill. Annunciata Tower under Gonzalez. pressure from Gonzalez. Into turn one, the they go. Center outside. Oh, they're just all staying line. They're all playing nice. Yeah. No real changes change. up in the front for that for that <laughs> restart. They they know that it's going to be the two laps, so they're not really working, they're not really focused on making it done in turn one because yep. they know they still have two laps to make it happen. And watch out for Jake Drew. He's in fourth at the moment in that silver hair number seven, and he's all over the back of Gonzalez. And I think he wants to have a pop at the podium. That would be a great result to yeah, take over the car showing. that won this race last year. Yeah, and Connor Zilch has proven that car is fast, so Jake Drew is just out here, and he's really trying to live up to that legacy that Connor Zilich has shown with that car. Meanwhile, Bacon all over Hurley as they dive into six. Two to go. Uh, less than. Oh, on the outside is the 41 of Andretti trying everything, uh, and now Andretti goes to the inside at seven. So Andretti also got his tail up and looking for a result in the 41. Ooh, Gets a little slide. slide. Out of seven does Andretti. So that's just not going to help him on that run. That, that hurts the power down, so instead of accelerating faster that you're spinning your wheels not really going anywhere so that's going to hurt his run so it's going to make it even harder to make a move into 10a but he still looks like he's looking for it yeah and uh, here comes drew as i mentioned on gonzalez jake Made drew the down makes the, the move 10 nicely done perfect picture perfect move at road atlanta and there's nothing that he can do gonzalez is set try and come back at him and he does so under down the, the bridge. inside side into by 12. side gonzalez Whoa, come on! He lifts out of Has it. Has to lift out. Yeah, that would have been a crazy move. Super high commitment. He isn't but done, he's though. looking into the turn one on the that inside. Last lap. And everybody going for the points here. Gonzalez trying every which way in the 40 white car. He's side by side as they go up the hill for the blind crash. And he's trying to take him. You told me you couldn't overtake there. Yeah, he's but he made it, it done. I <laughs> love it. Yeah, and he made it stick. So too is Baker. Excuse me, is Hurley trying to have a go at Drew. Well, drama indeed, a fantastic move at the crest of the hill at the top of turn two. And that was brave maneuver. Bacon, meanwhile, still trying to catch her. Full Hurley. course yellow. That guy has a full course yellow flag out. I don't know. Well, I'm not sure why. Order. Annunciata is still there, though, as they dive into six for the last time. And at the moment... I think there's a full course yellow. Yeah, there is. Right. There is a full course I think our, our, our screen has an update. There it is. Yep, it's all slowed down. So we're going to finish finally under caution, but we had some excitement, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, that was crazy. And then, so that's interesting. I don't know if they're going to go back a lap or keep no. it with that lap because... It's going to finish under the yellow. Pretty sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because sometimes they end it early and go, like, reverse a yeah. lap. But I think that's if there's, like, no, a black I see flag. What you mean. Yeah, yeah. Because then Drake Drew crossed the line that lap in front of Tyre Gonzalez. But Tyre Gonzalez is currently in front. So I think they're going to finish this lap out and then call it. But sometimes if there's a red flag, it gets kind of interesting. Yeah. And they, they like, rewind a lap. Yeah. They should so that would be because it's but then, Yeah, they'll just finish this one yeah, out. Yeah. I think, anyway. We'll soon find out, but Thomas Merrill, either way, has done a great job of uh, maintaining his position at the front. He got a great lead away from Matos, did an excellent overtake on Matos. Matos went out with a puncture, and Inciata has been there and thereabouts all day long. Jake Drew did a good job, but Gonzalez just got past him uh, as they entered the last lap and almost did it before they entered the last lap. Uh, but a great run by Gonzalez again. He was second at uh, Sebring, and now it looks as though he's going to take third. Drew coming in for Zillage takes fourth. Hurley fifth. Bacon, another good run by him up to six. Andretti uh, recovers well. He gets seventh. Barry Bowes, who was 11th at one point, makes it up to eighth position. Bocial uh, takes ninth. And Keith Project celebrating his 100th Trans Am race, finishes in the top ten. And that is great news for both Mike Coke Racing and Keith Prochuk done the business. That is really a great result. And how about this one? Michelle Abate, 11th place, having started down wow. in 22nd. The girl from Nevada. And uh, that is good 
work by her because she hasn't had too many top 10 finishes. She's just outside this time. Yeah, I wonder if 11. that's her best finish. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, don't know Hunter that might Henry, well be. that's a really great finish for her, for sure. Well, hats off to uh, the Ghost-sponsored Michelle Abate, one of the most popular drivers in Trans Am. That will go well. She'll be on our socials. Uh, looks like that's the reason it's down at the bottom of the uh, S's there in the Q3S's that we've got an incident of somebody hitting the wall and they've decided that they needed to get the trucks out there quickly and uh, that is why we have ended under caution. But what a, hey, catch your breath, hey? That was Evan, a crazy race. Fun. Yeah, you got to catch your breath from that one. That was like battling through the whole way. I mean, Thomas Merrill did pull out there a little bit in the end for the lead. But, I mean, all the way through the field, there was great racing. That was a really exciting race to watch. And there was there was hard racing, clean racing, a little bit of contact. But that, I mean, rubbing is racing, so that happens. But, I mean, great race and huge congrats to Thomas Merrill for making that, making that happen. Well, and the two men who've made the most impact on the championship, early as it is, uh, today are Thomas Annunciata, who started the day in fourth position, and Thomas Merrill with that first and second place. And Tyler Gonzalez, that's the other man, obviously, who started the day second place and should, by my account, uh, be second in the championship, but very close if not first in the championship with Merrill in second. So it, it is a bit of a turnaround. I said there could be a change in the guard, and there was, uh, and great to see for sure. But uh, my thanks to Evan Slater. That was a great uh, run at uh, Trans Am TA2 and a good advert for what these guys can do. Put on a great show of professional racing at one of the hardest circuits in the US of A. And we've got a long way to go in this championship. And the man from California, Salinas, California, Thomas Merrill, grew up watching his mum race club racing. Wow, Porsches. I didn't know that. Yeah, he used to, she used to take him round in her Porsche, him, him and his brother, uh, in the lunch break. Wow. And do a joyride and yeah, not I mean, tell anybody. Thomas Merrill, he's a great driver, tons of experience. I think he's a Trans Am champion maybe one or two times. I don't, I don't uh, fully once. know. But Just yeah, once. Trans Am champion, great, great driver, super clean. Um, aggressive when you need when he needs to be, but he uh, he knows what you need to do to win a championship. He knows that you got to finish races, you got to be consistent, you got to minimize mistakes. So really huge congrats to him. I mean, I know Jonathan, we were talking earlier, and you you pointed out that you thought your money was on him. I know. So, well, you I, you right. on the way here on the plane, I read a great article that said that Thomas Merrill was the most underrated, well, not underrated, but the mo America's best kept secret of motorsport is how he was yeah. described. I actually said to, to Thomas, did, did you know you? He said, no, I didn't read that. And I said, well, I said, not, not for long. He was at Sebring just a couple of weeks ago. Didn't have a good run there. He's here winning again in Road Atlanta, and the secret is out, folks, I'm afraid. Yeah. Thomas Merrill is the real deal, and he's been our champion already two years ago. Current champion Brent Cruz not here this weekend, but he'll be back. Uh, but we've got a cracking championship on our hands. So many competitive cars, so many youngsters on the way up, and also the old guard, like Thomas Merrill, if you can count him as an old guard, like you say, doing the business here at Road Atlanta. And he's happy. Well done to Mike Coke Racers, uh, Racing as well. And let's head down to Ben Sissel, who, as you can see, is with a delighted Thomas Merrill. Well, thank you. I'm here with Thomas Merrill. Unbelievable performance. Thomas, uh, just basically from lap, what, half or lap one, you just were the class of the field. I even talked to your pit crew and Bowser. I've never seen them more relaxed. Here's a hat for you, sir. Back on top here at Road Atlanta, that's got to feel really good. Oh, it feels great. It feels great to stand back on the top step with these boys uh, and HP tuners and the whole Mike Cope Racing crew. Um, they never stopped working hard. It's been a while since we've been up here. It's, it's really nice to put on a performance like that that I know is a reflection of their hard work. So I'm um, really proud of our group. Speaking of HP tuners, Keith Prochuk with HP tuners is going to be here joining you on Winter Circle because it's his 100th TA2 series start. That's pretty cool. It is really cool. Um, it's a great way to cap off a, a great weekend for all of us at uh, Cope Racing and HP Tuners. Big congratulations to Keith for 100 TA2 races, and here's to 100 more. Nice. I love it. Well, here we are down here at the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series Winner Circle. Thomas Annunziata, just a really good performance from you, especially up front, and then then it seemed like uh, they, were, they were gapping, and then you were fighting with Tyler Gonzalez, but what a great day for Nitro. Yeah, these Nitro Motorsports guys are amazing. Um, I wish it would have been a 1-2-3 for Nitro, but that was unfortunate for Rafa. 
Car was great. Um, we just had an, we were battling an issue from lap five. We had some wiring issues. Started to smoke. We were afraid it could catch fire, so we had to turn the the brake hoses and and uh, brake fans off. So it was it was hot in there. Um, tires were falling off, but we kept it under us, and we got a, a podium for both me and Tyler. It's amazing. I can't thank my sponsors: Nerd Focus, SC Arms, uh, AI Media, Bayshore Mortgage Funding, um, everyone that helps me. Cube Three. Thank you to Nick Middleton and and Keith Boyle for putting this show on, and this is awesome. I love it. Thank you very much, Thomas and Nugiata. Congratulations. And then if you're paying attention, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we talked at Sebring, Tyler Gonzalez, and you weren't sure you were going to run the whole championship, but now with the points that you're in, two podiums in a row, somebody would be crazy not to come in here, put their name on the side of your car, and make you run for a championship. How does it feel? Yeah, I mean, it feels good. Uh, I just can't thank Nitro Motorsports, all the guys that have been helping me out. You know, the crew's worked really hard all weekend long. This car's been a, been a gremlin, but uh, we're trying to figure it out. We had some issues here in the race as well with some suspension stuff and then some wiring stuff, just like Thomas. Uh, a little unfortunate, but I still think a P3 is a pretty good result. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to leave here with the, with the points lead, and I couldn't be happier. You know, it's unfortunate that Rafa couldn't be out there re battling with us, but hopefully I'll be back for some more, and I can't wait to. I love it. Well, that's Tyler Gonzalez. Now, we're going to come over here. We're here at the Jim Weed Winter Circle with the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series, but this guy right here just finished 100 Q3 Architecture TA2 Series races. Keith, that's got to feel pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it was pretty exciting going into the race. Uh, 100 races, 100 starts. Uh, I made a joke about uh, maybe 99 finishes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was a really great race. Uh, Barry really commanded the Pro-Am Series. And then uh, for, for uh, Merrill to win Pro, fantastic for us, fantastic for Cope and tuners. Really good day. The weather hold out. Uh, no rain whatsoever. Felt great out there. HP Tuners on the winning car. That's awesome. Well, we're here. We're going to celebrate here at Jim Weed Winter Circle. Jonathan, back up to you in the booth. Thanks, Ben. Yep, as always, great to hear from our top men in the championship. And congratulations also to Mike Cope just in the distance there with Thomas Merrill because, of course, he has run both Keith Prochak and the man who won the race, Thomas Merrill. Let's take a look at the results then. Confirmation of a great win and putting himself back in the box seat when it comes to the championship. Thomas Merrill wins for the HP Tuners Cope race cars. Uh, and a brilliant race it was for him. Anunciata, Thomas taking second place. Tyler Gonzalez in third. Then Jake Drew coming in for Connor Zillage. What a great way to make your debut. In fourth position for Silver Hair. Josh Hurley, fifth. Caleb Bacon, sixth. Adam Andretti up to seventh in the end. Barry Bowes, eighth. Gavin Bichel in ninth. And Keith Prochuk, as we've mentioned, for HP Tuners and Coke Race Cars in tenth. Eleventh, Abate. Probably her best finish. I'll check that with the uh, uh, archives, but that's a great result either way for Michelle. Lostowski, twelfth. Sabato, thirteenth, recovering from that spin. Kel Phillips, fourteenth. Hodge, Raymond, Durbin, Weisbeck in eighteenth position. Darren Mock, all the way to 19th despite the problems he had having to come from the back. Jared Odrick gets a finish, didn't get to finish in Sebring. Further down then, Matt Gray, Rogers, Will Rogers, then Rafa Matos does get 23rd after what could have been a win for him, sadly. El, uh, Ellis uh, Mayer, as you can see, also getting a result in 25th. Caton, Young, Boris said Jr., Winston and Mosak, unfortunately not finishing the race, as you can see. But everybody had some interesting times. Tom Sheehan also coming into the pits and having damage to his right front of the car. So that's how it finished, a bumper field, and as always, Road Atlanta throwing up some great racing throughout that 100 miles. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of what was a cracking Mission Foods Road Atlanta speed tour. So then, we got off underway, and as you can see, it was a good start from Rafa Matos, who got away well, sadly. Uh, losing out a position was Andretti to Caleb Bacon, then up in smoke went the silver hair of Connor Mosak. Uh, then a great move for the lead, Merrill taking it away from Matos, then a bump in the back for Sabato by Keith Prochek, then a puncture, sadly deflating the hopes of that man, Rafa Matos, but there was skittles everywhere as several cars going off, including this man, Tyler Young, hitting the wall hard, and it took some time to get him. Several cautions slowed things down, but the battle for the front was very hardly contested, but no one could stop this man, Merrill wins at Road Atlanta. So, that is how it finished, and now it's a time to head down 
and go down and see the podium. But of course, don't forget, uh, if you want to see the highlights on MAV TV, they will be this Thursday with TA2, the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 series, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, and that'll be followed immediately by the TA uh, highlights, XGT, SGT, and GT, all rolled in there at 9 p.m. So Thursday nights, forget else what you're doing. If Johnny's going to basketball, let him go. If you've got to do the yard, do it Wednesday, because Thursday nights is Trans Am, presented by Pirelli on MAV TV. So let's head down to the Jim Weed Winner's Circle, where Ben Sissel is ready for the podium. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jim Weed Winner's Circle here with the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series at Road Atlanta. Come on, crowd, get loud. Nice. This is going to be quite a fun celebration. This is going to be the dogs. See, the dogs are getting loud. You guys need to get loud also. So we're going to start with the Pro-Am Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series in third place, but having to start way in the back, let's get loud for Michelle Labonte. <laughs> Michelle Abadi back in the TA2 series with us. We got Nick Middleton here with Cube 3 presenting the trophy. Michelle, awesome to see you guys back. I don't even know which side it's on. Oh, uh, it's I'm two, here. one, three. Here you go. Okay. Right here. All right. <laughs> and now this is extra special, ladies and gentlemen. We're bringing them up here for second place. But before we do that, I'm going to introduce the president of the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli, John Claggett, to present him his 100th TA2 start, Keith Prochuk with HP Tuners, second in Pro-Am. How cool is that? Hold on now. Hold, hold that up for everybody. Look at that. Beautiful. And Keith, this is a rarity. We don't get to celebrate many 100 starts, so that's unbelievable. How does it feel? Uh, the 100 feels amazing. You know, I said it yesterday, TA2 is just a fantastic series to race in. Trans Am puts on a good show. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Michelle racing from the back to finish third. I was so happy to see her. And then Barry just dominated our, our race there, so fantastic. Nice, I love it. And then to have HP Tuners on the winning car, too. Spoiler alert, but hold on, Nick Middleton, you got another trophy here, too. The Q3 Architecture TA2 Series, second place pro analyst here for Nick Middleton for supporting the series at every race. And then, ladies and gentlemen, this guy is putting in the work. Racing in two series, he was just with us at Thunder Hill, way out west a couple of weeks ago, getting really fast. Let's hear it. I see our data, Barry Bowes, first place. Pro-Am TA2, Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. Barry Bowes just getting super fast out there. Nice job. So, Michelle, so great to have you back in the series with us. The livery that you were running, I was following what was happening on social media, and uh, I'm sure this feels good, and I'm sure you have some shout-outs you want to give. Yeah, first and foremost, I have to thank all of our first responders. As most of you know, I lost my brother November 30th from a drunk driver. He was Nevada State Highway Patrol. But today he was with me in my car, and he was help guiding me, keeping me safe, and brought me towards the front. I still got a few steps to go, but this is very iconic for me, and I'm just very grateful to be here today. Thank you to my team. Nitro Motorsports gave me the best car they could give me. It all falls in my hands at the point of, of driving it. It's definitely set up and could have won, but it needs the right driver behind it. I just have a few things to learn, but thank you guys very much. It's an honor to race with everybody here. Very super stoked for you, and Keith, great job. Um, just. Just thank you all very much for all the support, especially the fans who came out. Nice. I love it. Thank you, Michelle. So sorry about your brother and uh, love the livery that you run. I know this is extra special. And speaking of extra special, 100 races, Keith. And you and I have been in the TA2 series for just about as long together. It's really cool to see you out there knowing that you have a true day job, but you're out here running just because you love the series and love racing. Well, that's kind of the benefit of the program. Like, we work, and then we come here on the weekends to kind of run, try to run with the pros. And, and Barry certainly did today. He was running fantastic. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, man, the sun's coming out now. 100 races. Uh, yeah, TA2 is just a blast to be in. Uh, once again, congrats to uh, Michelle and Barry. Fantastic race. Nice. I love it. Keith Prochuk, ladies and gentlemen, HP Tuners. 
And that's two podiums in a row for the Pro-Am. So this points battle in this Pro-Am is going to get pretty serious. And speaking of running your own business, the ASIO data car there, Barry Bowes, you just love running this series, don't you? This series is the most fun I can possibly imagine. I've run in a bunch of different series. These cars have no aids, and, you know, as, as everybody knows, and you've just got to work it, and, and I love it. Nice. Anybody you want to thank? Absolutely. Uh, M1 Race Cars for giving me an absolutely fantastic car. Rolled off the trailer. Perfect. Made one set of change, and then we undid it, and we ran the weekend. <laughs> And, right, and, and that is phenomenal. It does so much to help the driver out. Uh, TRB Autosports for all their supports, and, and, and of course, ICO Data. Nice. I love it. Barry Bowes, ladies and gentlemen. Now, come on, Road Atlanta. Get loud. Let's hear it. Michelle Abadi, Keith Prochuk, Barry Bowes, the TA2 Series Pro Am Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series Pro Am. Now, we're going to do a hat dance. Man, I love the round of applause we're getting from the dog, too. See, we need more of that. I love it. All right, Road Atlanta, let's get loud. Come on now, show them some love here. Michelle Abadi, Keith Prochuk, Barry Bowes. Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series Pro-Am. What a great start to the season. And the, the championship battle is going to be, those are some big bottles of champagne there. Look out. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, did you get sprayed? Yeah, he said, yeah. <laughs> I'm loving this Atlanta. Keep this up. Keep up this energy. Nice job. Smart move. <laughs> Going right for the eyes. Yeah, exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Cube 3. Architecture TA2 series. This is really heating up, and just by my basic math, and I'm not very mathletic, but this person we're about to bring up in third, this is two podiums in a row to start. This is the second race of the season, so he's got to be probably top step of the points right now. So let's hear it, number 40. Where is Tyler Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen? Nick Middleton here, and Tyler Gonzalez. And ladies and gentlemen, the beginning of the season, Tyler told me he wasn't sure he's running for the championship, but man, somebody's got to sponsor this guy and have him have a run for the championship. Tyler, this has got to feel good. Yeah, I mean, I'm super glad to be up here. I'm glad I could do it for Nitro, uh, for Jeff, for Brian, for David, for everyone that's helped me get here today. You know, it's, a, it's been a big effort. We've put in a lot of hours here at the track, uh, working late nights to try and get that 40 car up on this podium. Uh, we just were able to get it done right behind Thomas. He drove a great race, and uh, other Thomas as well. You know, congrats to both of them, and I'm just glad to be up here with y'all. Nice. We'll pause for the start here of this F1600 race. And then the Q3 Architecture TA2 Series second place finisher. Really excited to be here back at Road Atlanta. Let's hear Thomas Annunziata. Last season was his rookie season. Now I guess we can kind of call him a veteran. Having some great runs here with us. Nick Middleton to present the trophy. And Thomas, I'm going to come to you. But then let's bring up in that beautiful HP tuners, the class of the field, the Cope race cars, our TA2 champion from a few seasons ago. Let's hear it. Thomas Merrill in that 26 car. Come on, Atlanta. I know you guys can get louder than that. Come on now. The Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series, always super competitive. Two Thomases up here. Thomas and Inziato, we spoke before the race. This has got to feel really good, but I know you really wanted that top step. Yeah, I mean, first of all, shout out to Nitro Motorsports. Four, four podiums in the last two races. That's amazing. It just really goes to show how hard they work and how fast these race cars are. Um, yeah, I can't thank Nick, Mike, and uh, Cody for all the work they've done over this weekend and, and so far this year. Uh, we'll get one soon, but uh, this is good points for the championship. Uh, yeah, we were struggling um, around lap five. We had a wire issue. It was starting to smoke, so I was afraid uh, it would burn up on fire. So I had to shut the brake fans off. The tires were, were getting hot, so I, I kept it under me, but had a really good battle with Tyler Gonzalez. Uh, proud of him. Proud of Thomas Merrill. Uh, yeah, I can't thank uh, all my sponsors enough in, in Cube 3.
Mike Middleton and, and Keith Boyle for putting this the show on. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, and thank you. Nice. I love it. I love it. And then, you know, we've been talking the last couple seasons about these young guns, Thomas Merrill, but for a while there, you and that two-time champion, Rafa Matos, another veteran, were battling it out. That had to feel really good. Take the mic. Tell us about your race. I had a feeling you'd ask me about my age <laughs> this interview. Um, yeah, no, it was a great, great race. Uh, a lot of fun racing up front with Rafa at the beginning. Uh, once we got up front, we just set sail. It was uh, such a good race car that the Cope crew gave me today. Um, and such a good day for a Cope race car. I mean, lo looking out and seeing all these Cope chassis up here makes me proud of all the work that we've done over the last couple of years. Um, and obviously, huge congratulations to Keith for his, his um, 100 race brick. And very happy to put the HP Tuner's car on the top step. Uh, it was just a great day. Um, it, it was a pleasure to drive that race car, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Nice. I love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, come on, Road Atlanta, get loud. Tyler Gonzalez, Thomas Annunziata, Thomas Merrill. That is our 3-2-1 there at the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. And then Eric is going to do the hats. Is everybody of age, have we asked that? They're not of age, he says. They've got extra ones to throw out. Oh, and they've got some hats to throw out, too. Let's throw out some of these V-Box hats. Who's got the better arm? Last race here. Oh, nice. Where did the Merrills go? Oh, there we go. In the Rolling Stone shirt. All right, get loud, everybody. Tyler Gonzalez, Thomas Annunziata, Thomas Merrill, Cube 3 Architecture, TA2 Series. Got a Ricky Bobby fan out here, too. Love that. Oh, yeah. So you can see Michelle passing out sparkling water. Thomas Merrill has the advantage here. with the, He can spray that thing pretty good <laughs> as he goes right for the eyes. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to see these three gentlemen on the podium quite a bit this year. So unbelievable. And then we've got one more for you, Thomas Merrill. So Thomas and uh, Tyler, you guys can step off. I think we're good. Chris Clark. We're good, but then our Omo Legato Fast Lap Award, presented by Nick Middleton of Cube 3 Architecture, goes to Thomas Merrill. Let's hear it. Our fastest lap. I love it. Wait, Nick Middleton, come back up here. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Nick Middleton here with Cube 3 Architecture, sponsoring the series, your second race. This has got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, great being on the podium every week, but this is a very competitive field this year. I'm looking forward to all the races. Um, congratulations to the top three there. Um, I'm looking forward to the next one in Coda. I'll see you all there. But uh, at least it held out no race. So, awesome nice. job. Thank you. Next one's in NOLA. No, NOLA, yeah. But we're all watching Coda tonight because Connor Zillich is running the truck series. But Jonathan, I'm going to send it back up to you. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, and racing everywhere. And our graduates are making it each and every weekend somewhere in racing. And uh, we are growing some superstars in this championship, no doubt about it. So... We are about to head out of here for TA2. Uh, just a reminder again that we will make Thursday nights Mav TV's Trans Am Night. And that, of course, is 8 p.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. Eastern for all the highlights. Until then, though, we'll be back with more from SVRA. We'll see you next time.
kind of surprise oh. things and all he rockets by Simba. One of the ways you overtake here at Sebring is really good in the breaking zone, like this one right here. Oh, no. Both go around. There's the green. We 